Well, first of all, uh, welcome to all active objectors and signatories whose uh, long-term persistence paid off with a refusal for planning permission for the fracking. <laughs> Take a breath, there will be a part two, by the way. Uh, but anyway, first one to us. <clears throat> Right, welcome everybody. If you've got a mobile phone, if you'd like to put it on silent, please. Thank you very much. Right, a massive welcome to Rob B of the Dignity Alliance, who asks, who is your council? Our councils are seemingly morphing into other entities via a rebranding process. Is this necessary? Why is this? What is the cost and, of course, who benefits? These questions and more have been posted by Rob who has done extensive research into Wigan Council towards some of these entities with interesting results. These council entities have taken it upon themselves to issue summonses with a view to finding people and, in some cases, repossessing their homes, apparently with a blessing of the judiciary. Is this right? The same person who altered Wyabora Council has done the same with Wigan prompting freedom of information requests from concerned Wiganers and especially Rob. Please welcome Rob B. How are you doing guys? First of all, thank you very much. I'm humbled that so many people are taking an interest because there are more people out there not taking an interest in this stuff and this is really important. Uh, the idea tonight is, uh, the, the, the purpose of this evening if you like, is at the end of this talk, uh, I'll try to make it as interesting as I can because these guys deliberately try and make it boring. Uh, I'll try and make it as interesting as I can. And um, when we talk about conspiracy theories, I'm not an actual conspiracy theorist. However, this is the actual definition of, of conspiracy. Uh, there's something big happening behind the scenes and they're desperate for us not to find out about it. At the end of today, you will know enough where you can start digging into your own, let's call them councils. And, uh, and hopefully you guys will get the same results. This is what the Dignity Alliance and myself stand for. I'm a single issue uh, campaigner. It's about a slate, uh, end, put an ending to slavery, uh, slave trading, human trafficking and all forms of involuntary servitude. And we are all in this room in a form of involuntary servitude, as I will prove. Uh, but I hope to bring you a similar type of truth, because what you guys, maybe not the people in this room, but certainly the people out there, believe is fact, is in fact not fact, is alternative realities. Uh, now, if you want to just go to the next clip, that's it, yeah. So, uh, just a quick, I don't read The Guardian as such, I tend to keep away from newspapers and the TV, but this sort of highlights the severity of what council tax is. And I get people saying, but council tax, if you don't pay it, who's going to fix the roads? The old people, the children, blah, 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 puppy dogs and starving polar bears and the rest of the nonsense, right? Up to 40% of council tax levied in low-income households is unpaid. Right, this is from August last year. 40% uh, of council tax levied in low-income households is unpaid. I can go into, I won't read the whole article, but there's one section of it. Uh, Sharon Taylor, the chair of the local government association's finance panel, I'm sure she's in a lovely salary, our expense, yeah, uh, said councils would need to, but she'll no problem paying council tax. Councils would need to find £1 billion by 2016 to protect discounts for those in low incomes. Uh, at a time when local government is already tackling £20 billion worth of cuts, this is a stretch too far. Many councils have been put in an impossible position. No one wants to ask those in the lowest incomes to pay more, but they do. Uh, but pressure on funding for local services means many councils have had little choice but to reduce the, reduce the discount. Now, what I'm hearing there is a highly paid gobshite uh, saying blah, 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 we don't care, give us your money. That's what that says to me. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I couldn't sleep at night if I was her. Uh, once I've known six people now who've committed suicide through debt, personally known six people who've committed suicide through debt, and I don't want to bring the tone down, you know, uh, but I just want to emphasise the severity of what we're talking about. These people who are doing all this, all this nonsense, yeah, think they're doing their job, and unfortunately, as they're finding out, bullying is not part of the job, and what they do is they play a game where it's called uh, uh, distancing, distancing yourself from the actual consequences of your actions, and there's a, there's a doctrine involved in that six points of, of, uh, six, uh, uh, points of distance. 
And once you get to six points away from the actual person committing suicide or whatever, the war or whatever's happening, you, you think you're not, you're not liable for it. And that's every taxpayer, by the way. Uh, so these guys believe I'm just doing my job. You know, it's not me, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, yeah I know he killed himself, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, I know that family are crying, but I'm just doing my job. It's not doing your job. Their job, is, I believe, was to work for us. Yeah, but anyway. Right, so we'll go into the, the presentation proper now. Now, I, at the moment, uh, I'm at Wigan. I use that word at advisedly, because in means in the jurisdiction, at means you're not in the jurisdiction. I'm at the jurisdiction of uh, Wigan Borough, not the borough at Wigan, or the borough in Wigan, or the borough of Wigan, it's Wigan Borough. These guys will start playing mind games with using legalese. They'll say it's the borough of Wigan, no, it's not, it's Wigan Borough. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, now, uh, what's that, four, four years now, four or five years now, I've been not challenging council tax, that's not even, I haven't even got that far yet with them. Uh, just asking a simple question, who are you? And some people might have heard me doing my previous presentation, who are we, who am I? Yeah, uh, this is the next one, ask him who are you? And all that time I've been writing letter after letter, when I, mean, I used to write letters and care what they said, uh, letter after letter, they've point blank refused to identify who they are, where the authority comes from and what their capacity is. Simple questions. If that was a double glazing firm, you would not want to get anywhere near them. You'd run a million miles from them. If they were giving you different bank accounts and different names and using three or four different company names, you wouldn't go anywhere near any business. But we, most people just think, it's the council. It's the council. Uh, the council, the word council, and this all comes down to words, is a grey word. We're having council now. Yeah, it's like the word court. We're having a court now. These are grey words. Right, so don't be, don't be intimidated by these words. Uh, and these guys are, I was going to say very good at avoiding using the words, but they're not. These guys are nasty, they're evil, they're vindictive, they are no sense of no moral standards, they have no sense of uh, internal guidance. They, 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 a lot of these people, I, can, I, I think they've got mental problems. I really do think they've got mental problems. Uh, and they think they can justify what they're doing the same, same as you know, we've heard in history where people used to go out there and kill other people because it was just obeying orders. This, this is this defence they're using. Uh, I don't think there's any excuse whatsoever for causing misery, having a, an industry of misery. As you saw in the previous article, 40% of, let's call them poor people, yeah? Uh, which, I'm, I'm a poor person, you know? 40% uh, of poor people can't afford to pay their bills. You think that's the point where the supposed guardians uh, I think we're, we're, we've messed up here, we need to change things, you know, because we're, we're hurting people. No, it's an industry of misery because there's money involved in private companies and private equity firms and all sorts of scams. And there's also, uh, you'll find as well, it's not one organised, one, one, the pro, the, 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 I'd say a miscalculation a lot of people make is you think that these councils are very organised, they're one finely tuned machine. Will anyone that's worked for a council or, had contact with the council, who realises it's not, it's gangs, it's infighting, they hate each other, the partners don't talk to each other. But what they'll do is they'll just come for us because it's an easier target. And the poor are the easiest targets as well. So, uh, so this is, uh, I've called it Toon Wat Da Fuk, I'll mispronounce that deliberately, as Wigan Council, because there's a video on YouTube and it's a. Uh, uh, I think it was called Hood to the uh, Australia, the uh, part in Australia or something called. And there's a very the guy proved with because he was he was importing a car from from America, and he proved it was two tax offices, two revenue and customs, two border controls, two governments, two commonwealths. It's a very good, a very good article, a very good uh, presentation he did on YouTube, uh, and that's him going for the national government. Uh, the power now in this country is not at national level. Right, I can tell you that now. The power now is at local level. <laughs> Agenda 21 has already kicked in. European Union is dismantling Britain. It's already done it. It's already done it. There is no Britain anymore. Do you know Britain and British has no legal meaning? That's fact. Check, ask yourself. Uh, we're now part of this, this UK corporation. Uh, and the idea is to, 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 they've already done it. England's broken down into nine city regions. And there's a phrase to look up, all the guys that are campaigners city regions. Scotland already is a city region with one single police force, one law firm, one uh, law industry. 
uh, one government, it's one city region. Wales and Northern Ireland similarly are uh, one city region. And this is nothing new because I've got the original documents going back to the 1950s where there were places a long game these guys are playing. And uh, they've been planning this since the 1950s. I've got a very good book from 1963. Uh, and it's called... Uh, Oh, what's his name? It's JP, Professor JP McIntosh. She was a I'm not a Glaswegian, so I don't take a responsibility. Uh, but J, uh, Professor JP McIntosh, she was a Marxist, was already at that point. Him and his, his gang were planning breaking up uh, Great Britain. Okay, so this is not something new. It's happening. Just we've all been asleep at the wheel. Well, no longer that stops. So the Dignity Alliance, say, the background to the Dignity Alliance is we are single, single issue and you'll find everything we are doing, boy, everything, everything in this room is campaigning for, whatever, boils down to the end of the day, you've been forced to do something against your will, which is, as another talk could do, is the definition of slavery, slave trade, human trafficking or involuntary servitude, which are all criminal offences. But we are getting there arguing law with them, and not understanding that the conduct of these lower courts, particularly the magistrates' courts, is absolutely demolishing the complete credibility of the entire justice system, top to bottom. I'm not saying all the judges at the top are bad, I'm not saying they're all good. Uh, but I would, I would certainly say that the conduct of the magistrates and uh, district judges is severely damaging, permanently, irreparably damaging the reputation of the entire judiciary. Because people like me, I don't care if it's that type of judge or that type of judge, I just see one type of judge badly misbehaving themselves, one class of judge badly misbehaving themselves. And as a result of that, the, uh, the, I just see all judges, if, 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 the judges, if the, the higher judges are so good, why they're not stepping in and stopping this? That's the way I look at it. Sitting in the sidelines is not a defence. So, uh, you've heard this phrase before, somebody needs to do something. I'm sick of hearing that, right? Yes, we, somebody needs to do something. We are, right? I think everyone in this room is involved in something. We are doing something. What's worrying me is all more people out there. There should be a queue around the block to come and listen to this. Uh, but the majority of people out there watching Coronation Street, whatever, football, whatever nonsense is on, uh, getting uh, entertained by the box in the corner. So we are doing something. You're all aware it's 800 years since the signing of the real Magna Carta, the original Magna Carta, uh, where the king at the time with a knife held to his throat and he was forced to sign. Yeah, the people, you know, the legal lawyers would be saying, that's terrible, it's, it's not a real contract. Yes, it was. It was called trial by combat. We've still got it today. Okay? Uh, ask the Iraqis about trial by combat. Yeah? Uh, there's numerous countries in the world. You could be East Timor, you know, you could ask a lot of countries about this. So it's... The lawyers will argue, and if you go into official websites, they're all, oh, yeah, it's 800 years, and they spend fortunes and these, having these celebrations of Magna Carta, not one of them even understands what it is. Or if they do understand, they're lying about it, right? It's another jo jolly for them, you know. Try teaching kids, yeah, this is old stuff, you don't have to worry about it. Magna Carta, I don't care what the words are. If you actually read real books with Magna Carta, the words themselves are kind of irrelevant. What Magna Carta is, is an ideal Right? It's, a, it's a philosophy. We, the people, are the power. This goes back to earlier times, before Magna Carta, right? Before the Normans arrived, the people run the country. So Magna Carta was cementing the issue that, you know, we, the people, run the country. We are the power. Okay? So Parliament now is trying to, if you go on the website, they make these, these glorious claims that Parliament is sovereign. My, I'll be polite, backside are sovereign, right? Uh, that's what's called a coup d'etat. Right, we are the power. We've got this bunch of reprobates down there with fingers in the till and all. So I'm sure there's some good MPs amongst the, the horde of uh, uh, waste rules that's down there uh, and the fingers in the till and the professional politicians and the hordes of lawyers and accountants that are now uh, polluting our parliament. I'd like to see a parliament filled with, uh, filled with bin men and dinner ladies and you know people in this room, just normal people. We don't get that. We get the lawyers. So the lawyers are very good. Oh, the wording of it. I don't care about the wording of it. It's the ideal. The ideal is of freedom. Okay? That's what Magna Carta was supposed to give us. Lord Denning, Master of the Rules, uh, said the greatest constitutional document of all times, the foundation of freedom of individual against the arbitrary authority of the despot in relation to Magna Carta. Magna Carta was so good, the Americans based their Bill of Rights on it, based their constitution on it. The Australians, you know, most first world countries have based, based the, 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 the foundation of the, 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 the government system 
on Magna Carta. Uh, they've kind of forgotten that. They think Magna Carta is just a pretty thing to wheel out every now and again and charge money to look at. It's not. It's here, as you'll find out later on, it's to be defended with your life. Right, uh, most of you might not have seen this. This was obviously myself and my good lady. And uh, we contacted, just out of the blue, I just decided, I'm going to a chat from the local paper. Not for one minute thinking I'd run the story. Uh, that I'd proven that the council was multiple councils. And he says he can show some evidence. So, okay. St strolled in, carrying like four foot of paperwork. Well, but he came in and he just he looked at it, some, 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 just a, a short few bits and pieces from it, and the evidence was so overwhelming, he ran the story. And the interesting, uh, interesting thing was this happened because the council, were tr the, the council, I'll do that from the council now, yeah, this outfit uh, were trying to get my wife to disclose private information, we said, under what authority? I still should always be your first response if somebody says you must do something under what authority? The law. Whose law? Yeah. Uh, so we went into court and uh, with a, a friend of ours from DD Law in Liverpool, and uh, we just asked a simple question: Who's bringing the case? Because uh, we found out the Wigan Council is not, as you'll find out shortly, Wigan Council who are you represent. The case was brought by. It was listed outside in the court listings as Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council versus my good lady. Uh, the, all the, 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 the paperwork that had been issued before was under Wigan Council, uh, and uh, the, the, the Royal Borough is actually Wigan Borough Council. So we were asking who's, who's, who's making these demands. So the chap said Wigan Council, we objected, at which point he turned around to the judge and said, can we change the name of the complainant? There's your evidence. Case withdrawn. Right. How many people give information or demand you to give information? Because what you're doing is informing against yourself once you've done that. They say, well, he did it, or she did it. Right, so uh, the report at the end of it, love a young, love a young guy, I say to him, this story is of national importance. This will make or break your career. You can make a big career out of this, right? Because this story is about to break. And by the way, down in Parliament, we've got this from uh, two MPs in Parliament. They're calling this the council tax scandal because they're waiting for us to break. And this is going to be devastating when the sheer scale of the fraud and the fiddling and the corruption and the money laundering is taking place as she goes out in the public. Uh, so the, the chap who is the uh, chief of finance officer uh, has said, uh, strongly denied any impropriety or wrongdoing in the way the Austin's case was handled. Paul McEvitt, the Director of Resources and Contracts of Wigan Council, uh, also Section 151 officer, covered that. The Council has acted properly in all legal matters. Well, they hadn't. We've just spent a page and a half proving they hadn't done that. Uh, and in November 2014, this matter was heard in front of a district judge and then a magistrate's court regarding a request for liability order to be granted for non payment of council tax. Okay. Right, okay, that was in, uh, it wasn't in front of a district judge, he was maybe at the hat of a district judge, but he was sitting in a private capacity, he's not there as a district judge, it's a private capacity, it's a private court, and also the, I went into that court with three pieces of evidence proving three counts of serious fraud, and uh, this, this uh, Judge Jonathan Feinstein uh, said, on what basis is your, your, uh, are you challenging the, 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 the complaint against you then? Nothing based on fraud is any standing, sir. At that point, it was desperate for me to go human rights because I was going to bring slavery in. I thought, no, I think three, three counts of serious fraud so is enough to undermine any case. It's based on fraud. And uh, the judge decided to issue the liability order anyway after calling me names and telling me which wonderful people the people in the council were. Yeah. Did any of you watch the, 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 the programme last week about Wigan Council? Did anyone not see it? Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff happening with Wigan Council to try to privatise it. And uh, we've got a chief executive there. You might know her from this area, Donna Hall. She was in your council here, yeah? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I've got to be careful of saying the, the in public, obviously. But uh, my understanding is that Wilden Fear Council, Wilden uh, Wire, Wire Borough Council, I keep saying Wire. Yeah, Wire, <laughs> Wire Borough Council, right, was uh, 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 contracted out to a 15 year management contract to a company called Capita. And the same happened, I believe, in Bury Street afterwards, where Don Hall was also involved. So she's obviously, you know, let's say, familiar with the capita. And I suspect the same's happened in Wigan. And I suspect that that programme was intended to demolish public 
uh, opinions in Wigan, the, the people in Wigan Council, and particularly the unions, and so the public outrage. Somebody needs to do something. Yeah, okay, we'll privatise the management. So just be careful of the purpose of that 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 programme, because that should never hit there unless they try to do damage to themselves. So behind everything, series, there's people at the top who do know what's happening, playing games. Yeah, ITV on. I, no, it's not. It's actually somebody told me. I'd, I'd go to a neighbour's house and watch it. There's somebody phoned me up and said it'll be on. I didn't know it was on. Uh, this is obviously him now reacting to us. Right, so. Uh, I'll take you into some interesting stuff. No, anyway, so that. Uh, he says at the end of it that the. Uh, Mr. McEvitt did not comment on the local authorities' legal status or trading entities. That's the final sentence. Right. So the reporter said to me, can you prove to me who you are, who Wigan Council is? No, I'm not making comment. So I think that speaks for itself. Uh, there's another story going about this Friday from another gentleman uh, from Wigan, uh, who's on a similar path. And because there, there weren't as many stories as they can on this, right? Uh, so there's a, w watch the, the Wigan Today newspaper this Friday, buy a copy or read it online. And there's another story with some other guy with a very similar story. They're filming outside, apparently they're taking photographic opportunities outside the council, the council offices today. When I say council offices, right, private building, it's already been leased out, sold. Uh, but the uh, security guards come out and why are you taking photographs of the council building? Yeah, anyway. Right, so the next one was, now, this goes back to 2013. Now, I found out... Uh, you can go into your local library and get a copy of the Royal Charter for your... How many people here have read your council constitution? Right, okay, that's the guys who come to the meets regularly, right? What I urge you to do is you've no idea what this council is, you've no idea what your rights are, you've no idea what the hell's happening until you read the council constitution. And there's a lot of it is dry, boring stuff, but... Uh, I can it cause the council to rewrite large parts of the constitution for things like the, the council and its citizens. Well, that's a claim of ownership which is the definition of slavery internationally. Any claim of ownership, the council and its citizens, you don't know me. Uh, so I've got to write, anyway, but so the, I get a copy, you can go into your local library, ask to see the, a copy of the, the, the Royal Charter, the council constitution, write to the council, they're obliged to give you a copy if you ask for it. If it's not online, demand they put it online. Uh, then there's also what's called a grant of arms. So your council have this fancy coat of arms, yeah? Uh, that's not somebody's make-up themselves. They have to design it and then pass it through for approval to the uh, Collegiate of Arms, and they will look at it and approve it, uh, and uh, that becomes a coat of arms, OK? Now, the co that also becomes the corporate seal. Now, if I had to use a seal that you guys is your personal seal, if I had to just decide to use that, I'd be committing fraud, wouldn't I? Right? We've got more than one council using the same seal in Wigan. And I, so what I did was I wrote to the Privy Council, ultimately who's in charge of these guys. And I said, I found that this multiple council identities and uh, they're using this, they're all used, seem to be using this one corporate seal. Surely that's fraud. Uh, and the response I got back was, uh, I'd asked for a list of all the, the, the bodies who have got charters. And funny enough, Wigan Council wasn't on there. So they haven't got a charter. Uh, however, they, they then said that the, uh, as far as I can establish my records, no charter grants have been made to a body with Wigan in the title since the grant of 1974. So I've confirmed the ones I've got are the only ones. There's nothing superseded them. And also they then say, regarding investigating the alleged misuse of armorial, armorial bearings, which is the coat of arms, if you believe the arms are being used inappropriately, then I can only suggest that you could make your complaint to the College of Arms. So counterfeiting and fraud is not a crime anymore. Okay. Hmm? There's no point. I mean, there's no point. I just dig deeper and deeper and deeper. There's no point at this point. Uh, what's happened is he went, I told you, I actually wrote to the... Mr. Pickles at a time, Eric Pickles, and he was the Minister for Local Government and Communities. And I pointed this out to him, I said, I want to make a complaint here, so there's, who's the council for, for Wigan? Because if you go on the Royal website, if you go on the government websites, uh, which is actually based in San Francisco, did you all know that? Your .gov.uk websites, did you know it's all, all from San Francisco server? Okay. Uh, 
and that goes on to another talk I do about uh, we are occupied territory, legally, uh, you're occupied people. Uh, but anyway, uh, on, the, on, the, on the, the, the official websites, the government websites, it recognises the, the, the council for Wigan has been Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. However, Freedom of Information Request confirmed Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council has no corporate status. I don't know if you know what corporate status means. It means that technically they don't exist legally. However, we find that Wigan Lee Magistrates Courts has taken legal complaints from them. Okay, they're the ones that cited as being, uh, as being the complainant in cases. I thought a legal person, if you're not a legal person, you can't take legal complaints, but hey, it's only the law. It's only for to keep us peasants in our place. These guys play hard and fast with the law. And I've been in court and I've stood there and I've argued this and the, the, the sheer audacity of these people and, 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 and just excusing out and out fraud and corruption because it's their mates. The law is not there, guys, to serve justice or to serve right. Yeah? The, the law is there to beat us into submission, have no doubt about it, to keep their scams going, to protect them all and keep them in their nice, their nice fancy jobs and to make sure we keep paying for it. I've been in court enough times against these, this mob to, to find that right. Now, if you want to know what a royal charter looks like, that's the one that's sitting in the, the council offices. Uh, that's the one that's on the wall. However, you'll notice that there's no actual signature on it, there's no actual sign, uh, seals on it, because it's a photocopy. So I asked the question, where's the original one? It's in Manchester. So it, who's, who does I tell you who, where we're run from in Wigan now? From Manchester. Uh, so it was a chap there, he, he, was, he worked for uh, Democratic Services. And I said, pray tell, young sir, what do you do in Democratic Services? He couldn't answer the question. <laughs> right. I says, well, I says, I've got some bad news for you, mate. You know, I says, uh, I can serve my own democracy. We used to do it with pitchforks. <laughs> and he ran out of the room. Uh, so, but interesting, what I want to point this out is, it says there, this is a section here, yeah, any privileges or rights belonging immediately before the of April uh, 1074, 1974, and the, uh, to the burgesses of the ancient borough of Wigan or Lee shall belong hereafter to the whole of the borough of Wigan. Now, that's a clever trick they've played, and everybody's missed that. It says all the rights and privileges belong to burgesses. Before that, we used to be inhabitants. Yeah? Uh, what they've now done is turned us into business people. So your house is no longer a domestic dwelling, and this is an argument some of our guys are arguing in the courts. I've stopped arguing in the courts. There's no justice in there. There's, the judges will get given an executive order from the chief executive telling them, tell me to lose the case, because it's not in the financial interest, economic interest of the area, and the judge will find against it. Yeah? It, anyway. uh, but what they've done very cleverly is converted your homes, your family place, where all the love and happiness and family life goes on, they've converted it into a non domestic dwelling, which is in between, not quite a commercial dwelling, it's somewhere in between domestic dwelling and commercial dwelling. It's a non domestic dwelling, yeah? And they've done this to bamboozle us, right? This to me is absolutely abhorrent what they've done, right? They've now made their houses into small businesses, because before 1974, uh, uh, rates were paid only by businesses. It's a scam. Okay. Right, okay. And again, that goes on to the other talk of do occupied territory. Actually, our government abandoned, uh, the sovereign government abandoned uh, the country in 1974 and allowed an occupying power called uh, the EEC to step in. That's another thing. And if you notice, they're about to abandon Parliament and Buckingham Palace again, aren't they? I could be aware of what that is. That's them now abandoning government to let the, 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 the occupying power move in deeper and faster and harder. This is them now accelerating things before this a joke of a referendum. So be aware of what's happening. We see they're abandoning Buckingham Palace. Right, there's there. That's uh, what a Royal Charter looks like. You can ask for that. Read to the Privy Council and ask for a copy of your Royal Charter. It'll say exactly, sorry, it'll say exactly the same words because that comes all under the Local Government Act 1972. It tells them what to put in that. Okay, so they'll all say those same words. Privilege, privileges or rights. A privilege can be taken away. A right can be taken away. And if you read your, royal, your, your, your council constitution, it's hilarious. Look at the section called Your Rights as a Citizen. <laughs> You've got the right to pay tax, the right to shut up, right to do what you're told. Yeah? It doesn't give you many rights. The only right you have, positive rights, is you have the right to elect a mayor. That's it. That is the only right your partners' councils think you have. 
So if you're surrendered to council jurisdiction, you're surrendering all your rights, all of them, for the one I want you, you can elect a mayor, so he can boss you around instead of somebody else. And did you all know that a council mayor, uh, a borough mayor, his job, he doesn't actually work for the council, he works for the City of London, the Crown. His job is what's called an escheator, and the escheator is there to sweep up any unclaimed estate right, for the Crown. And it's, you know, the County Palatine has got a escheator, and you'll find the, uh, the, the, the council, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Crown has got an escheator, and whoever runs the mayor runs the, runs the uh, he gets to claim any un unclaimed estate. There was a, a case two years ago, in Man I think it was two years ago in Manchester, where somehow they, didn't, they couldn't trace the owner. It was, it was some company going bankrupt. And there was this house where there technically was no owners because they were going bankrupt. And the County Palatine came in and grabbed it. And I was, I'm, I was, I've gobsmacked people in Liverpool when they tell them the County Palatine extends down to Mersey and extends all the way to Oldham. Yeah. So I've got friends of mine in, uh, in Liverpool now, instead of putting down Merseyside, they put down County Palatine in Lancaster. Uh, for a bit of fun. Anyway, see, when you start digging, guys, there's so much information out there. So much information. That's what a real grant of arms looks like, the bottom seals, right? Uh, that's what a, a real one looks like. Uh, and it's signed by the, the sorry, it's signed by the, 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 the seal of the privy, it's the privy seal, yeah? So that's why I wrote to the Privy Council. Okay. That's an old one. Right, this is with the, the text of the Grant of Arms. But what we'll just point out, you won't read the whole thing, obviously, but is this is where it gets very clever, because the, right, what that, this is the, this is the Royal Charter, and it basically says that they, they can use the name Wigan, and the, the, the district of Wigan shall have a status of a borough. So it's very vague what the actual council's called, right? That's where you guys have got clever. They think they're clever legal guys. So we can call it what we want, because it just says, you know, what have we? So you can make umpteen different names and confuse us peasants, right? Until you read the Royal Charter, the Royal Grant of Arms. That's for the corporate seal. Only one corporation can use that. And it says specifically, uh, Wigan Borough Council. So the District Council of Wigan is now known as Wigan Borough Council. And that the Wigan Borough Council is desirous of having blah 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 right Wigan Borough Council on its common seal Wigan Borough Council Wigan Borough Council Wigan Borough Council that is the sovereign council that is the council right so if they use any other names it's not the real council because they can't use that corporate seal and the corporate seal at the moment is sitting in an office somewhere in Manchester why is it sitting in Manchester who's using that corporate seal? Right. Any contract it used to be any contracts believe for below thirty grand and fifty grand to be stamped with a corporate seal. I think it's now one hundred and thirty grand or some some crazy now. Uh, it needs a corporate seal attached to it. I'm desperately looking for anyone who's got any contracts out there with a corporate seal on them because I want to see the name at the top. It's using these corporate seals. So if anyone's got any any uh, uh, official documentation with the Wigan Council corporate with the Wigan Borough Council corporate seal under any other name, I would really appreciate a copy. We will, we will have fun with that, trust me. Right, so, seven principles of public life. So anyone who acts in a public capacity as, uh, for the committee, committee of, was it the Committee on Standards in Public Life issued this in 1995. So if anyone works in a public capacity, in whatever capacity, they've got to, well, they, this is a guidance for them, right? It's guidance, right? It's not, it's not, obliged, you're not obligatory on them, but it's guidance, right? Uh, and this is civil service, local government, police, courts and probation services, non-departmental public bodies, health education, social and care services, anyone in the public capacity, this is supposed to guide them. Ah, you got to laugh. Selflessness, integrity, objectivity, accountability, openness, honesty, and the one I despise, which is leadership. I don't need no leader. We lead. Okay, this was thrown in, this is a common purpose nonsense. But... Selflessness doesn't exist. Integrity, still got to meet one. Objectivity, still got to meet one. Uh, accountability doesn't exist. Uh, openness, Wigan Council, don't exist. We had to actually get the Information Commission involved last week. There was a big, as you'll find out, there was a Freedom of Information request. We had to get the, uh, the Information Commissioner's Office to step in and force Wigan Council to release information. Uh, and even then, they've done a half cocked ass uh, job of it. We're going to have to go back for more information of them. But uh, there's no account. Wig Wigan Council's got such an appalling track record. Because what we've done, we've caught them in the hop, guys. This is a transition period from one regime to a new regime under Greater Manchester. 
and they're hoping none of his peasants would notice this. Yeah, but it's a nuisance, we're a you know, obstacle, you know. Uh, they're, they're important people and we're in their way, doing these great ideas that they've dreamed up in the committees, right? Uh, that's happened a lot in history, it never ends well. Especially with people making up these great ideas, but taking over other people's countries and taking away their freedoms. But that's what you should expect from your public officials. I have seen from Wigan Council, none of that. Leadership, plenty of leadership. You know, loads of committees telling us what to do. However, as I say, I don't need a leader. I doubt if anyone in this room needs to be led, because you lead cattle. And uh, the German word loosely translated into German for leader is Führer. We didn't have, for the, for the, 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 the previous generations there, uh, you never had leaders back in your day, did you? This is a fairly new development. You never had leaders back in, you never heard of somebody said you were going to lead you, tell me, take a run and jump. This is a new development. Right, so this is what a council tax bill looks like from whoever it is. You'll find out why I'm saying that now, right? Because because of us in 2013, they were forced to, uh, sorry, last year, they were forced to uh, take back, the, from what I understand, the council demands, because uh, it's not a bill, as I'm about to explain, and uh, change the name on the top of them, because of us. You guys can do this as well. You guys can do this. They, do, they have no idea now who the hell they are. So at the top, now, before that it said Wigan Council at the top, now it says uh, Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council, and now it says Wigan Borough Council. It's because it was. Grant of Arms. Uh, they no longer use the Grant, they no longer use the Arms. It's a different logo. What does that tell you? Different company. If that was real, the real borough, they'd be using the Armorial uh, Arms. They're not using this little green love heart with Wigan Council under it. That's, that's a different company. Uh, and it says a Wigan Borough Council, Customer services. I'm not a customer of the Wigan Borough Council. I'm an inhabitant. I'm a bloody taxpayer. I'm a you know I, I'm a I'm a voter. Used to be. I'm a voter. I'm not a customer. And customer's a dangerous word. To look into customers. It's a custom created. Yeah, that you're somehow servicing them. But anyway, uh, and services, right? So they're servicing something to us. No, Wigan Borough Council belongs to us. The answers to us. That's the service I want. Uh, and, but interesting, then gives the P.O. box no physical address. That's where it gets interesting. Uh, P.O. box, I don't know if you know, you can't serve legal papers in the P.O. box. Did you all know that? That's why they've got us writing to P.O. boxes, right? Anyway, right, blah, 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 barcodes, I don't like barcodes. When you ever get these, whenever you get documents like this, guys, right, this is a little side here, always ask, what does that mean? What does that mean? Why is there two barcodes? What account is that? Who does that relate to? What 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 does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What, what's that property reference number come from? Where can I uh, view it? Ask these questions. Why have they got two barcodes here? Does anyone in this room know why they've got two barcodes? Wouldn't you like to know? I won't get to tell you. Ask. <laughs> right, it'll shock you. Right, but anyway, uh, so this is the, what they're collecting this so-called council tax for, right? Uh, Wigan Council. What? I thought Wigan Borough Council was a proper council. It says Wigan Borough Council at the top. The sudden they've got Wigan Council there. That was a double glazing form. You'd now run, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd take a run. Uh, Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Authority and Police and Crime Commission. Okay? Uh, that's actually Greater Manchester Fire and Civil Defence Authority. That doesn't exist. It's Fire and Civil Defence Authority. They've done that not to frighten us. Right, one of the precepts and authorities for council tax is Greater, Man Greater Manchester Fire and Civil Defence Authority. It's actually Greater Manchester Fire and uh, Rescue uh, uh, Service. Right, so that's fraudulent for a start. That's incorrect for a start. And the Police, cr cr police and Crime Commission, what is that? As a commissioner, used to be an authority. But anyway, but the more interesting point is says Wigan Council there, right? Uh, and the total amount is subject to court proceedings. So. Right. However, on the back, this where it gets interesting because the silly buggers changed the front but couldn't change the back because they already were tied into private uh, bank accounts and deals and stuff behind the scenes, which will cover in some small detail. But it says their cheques should be made payable account uh, account PE and payable to Wigan Council. But didn't we already establish that Wigan Borough Council is a proper council? So who's this Wigan Council? So I've been asking them at that point for three years, who are, who's Wigan Council? <laughs> You're the, one that's, you're the one I'm making the payment to. 
So that's like double glazing company A saying, yeah, we're just doing all the sales and blah, blah, but make the cheque payable to, to them. You'd run. You wouldn't do it. That's exactly what these guys are doing. How many, how many lawyers, accountants, professional people and, and uh, do, do you believe live in the Wigan area? I'm sure there's, you know, there's more than one. Yeah? If, and my background's contracts manager, yeah. And if any, can, any subby put that in front of me, I'd tell them to shove it, I'm not paying it. That's, that's fraud. I wouldn't pay it. Right, anyway, so that's uh, previous bill. It says the council tax bill for 2015-16. At the top it says Wigan Borough Council, customer services, which tells me it's not the real council, because the real council doesn't have customer services. The real council, by the way, has got a town clerk, has got a town uh, uh, health inspector, has got a town a borough, a, a borough solicitor. Uh, the real names you still know, right? The, the, the uh, town exchequer, or borough exchequer, or all these proper names. When you start seeing the word officer, What's happened is that's the executive, and that, again, it's occupation, we've been occupied. That's the executive come in and taking over the sovereign council. Okay, so if you want to write to the real council, you write to the town clerk. If you want to write to the, if you want to write to the uh, executive, the new occupying one, you write to chief executive officer. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, any council used to be town clerk, and now they pretend to be the executive. And you've got executive power. It's been it's been usurped. Yeah. So as the gentleman at the front there confirmed it used to be a town clerk here. Uh, this is what's happened, is we were occupied, our councils, our regions, our central government were all occupied. And uh, if you, I mean, I won't go into depth on this one. Under international law of occupation, which I urge everybody to read into, you will, I promise you, it'll be the most fascinating read ever. Because all this stuff we're talking about is low level. What they're really doing is they're playing the higher game, international law of occupation. And there's a thing called the, the Joint Services Manual 2004 where the UK uh, military were forced to change the rules of engagement for conflicts. And there's a very interesting section in there called Occupied Territories. And there's a very good book I would highly recommend for people who know nothing about this good place to start. It's by a, a, a gentleman called uh, Professor Ayal Ben Vanista. So it's E for Echo, Y, A for Alpha, L, uh, Ben, B-E-N, uh, V-E-N, I-S-T-I. So it's Ben Vanisti. Uh, and it's called International Law of Occupation, and it's a book. It's not a dusty textbook. This is a, a proper book. You can read it, and he brings back, back up to bang up to date how it's been misused, right? Uh, and how these governments are getting round international law as well. Very interesting book. And he, he talks about East Timor and uh, South Georgia and Ab Abkhazia and stuff. Uh, but uh, these guys, when an occupying power comes in, it cannot oust from, uh, since the Brussels Treaty in 1870-something, the, they cannot oust the sovereign power, and also they cannot take away private property rights. Their job is to protect private property rights. So they step in as the administrator, or the executive, let's use military words now, officer, chief, executive, right, these are all key words. District, uh, if, you, if you look up the word district, if you read the legal dictionary, you'll be just as confused after reading the dictionary as you were before you started. In fact, more confused. He doesn't explain what it is. Pick up a military dictionary and start reading these words. Region, district. Did you know the word district is the troop that can be an area that can be patrolled by a troop of soldiers? We didn't have dist districts prior to 1974 because we were occupied. Right? And they were chief executive officers. Uh, go on the government website, see how many ministers we've got left. Ministry of MOTs. We've all had MOTs in our car, yeah? Right? Uh, I'll put money on the table if anyone can find the Ministry of Transport. It's been by the, the Directorate of Transport, the Secretariat of Transport. Right? So, Secretariat's military word. Okay? Uh, departments, military word. Right? These are all new departments. And they've slid in slowly. So, as peasants, so, I, you know, we're, we're doing our daily stuff, we miss it. What they've done is they've now, they've now uh, the executive, whereas Parliament is supposed to be a balance between the, 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 the sovereign power and the executive. This is civil, going back to civil war, right? So it's supposed to be a parley between the two sides to stop them fighting again. And you notice the Parliament, there are more than two sword lengths away from each other. There's a reason for that, to force them to talk. Uh, what's happened now, the executive has, because of Europe, has taken over, right? Uh, but they cannot oust or replace the sovereign power. That's why we've still got a Queen. They'd love to get rid of her, but they can't under international law. And the Queen owns the UK, so they can't oust her property rights. Uh, what they can do, though, is, and this uh, uh, Professor Ben Vanisti explains this, 
repeats it time and time again in his book, they mirror the sovereign establishments. So where is your Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs? They replace that with HMRC. Sounds the same, doesn't it? Her Majesty's Court Service gets replaced with HMCTS. Uh, I'm just asking you guys to check this yourself. You know, don't believe me, check this yourself. You know, this is from my reading. Uh, but you find every government department of any import has changed its name quite recently. Yep. Yep, there you go, land registry. In fact, I was doing an exercise last week. I found two land registries, one with a PO box number and another one that's based down in uh, uh, Lincoln's, in Lincoln's in Fields with a physical address down in London. And they both got different names. Two land registries. Right. You start digging, guys, you'll find two of everything. You'll start finding two of everything. And uh, the explanation for that is one is the sovereign establishment power and the other one is the occupying establishment and power. Okay. An occupation doesn't have to be military occupation. If a government abandons, abandons its post, uh, they, they can then bring in an administrative power to run the show because they've abandoned the post. So just watch out in Parliament empties to do this refurbishment. There you go. There you go. Where's the rest going? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we w I won't have time to go into too much depth here. I'm aware of the time limitations. Okay, it's nine o'clock. You want to take a, yeah. a break here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's okay. Rob made an important point there. Whatever you do, have some knowledge before you do it. A lot of people come to us, oh, I'm in the trouble, I've done this, I've done that, and what do I do now? Well, if you're asking the question, what would you do now? You've not prepared, you've not done your homework, you've not prepared for it, yeah? And I'm not saying you need to be an expert in the law, but you need to have done some background on it. So if you're going to use, get involved in the financial industry and start you know, uh, doing stuff like that, you must know what you're doing with it and be able to make that decision, right? Don't trust anyone else, okay? Because you find, if you follow the herd, the herd will fall on somebody else. So you find there's a whole chain of people following each other. Uh, and uh, for the, the, the March on Wednesday, uh, pitchforks, I understand, are quite cheap on Amazon at the moment. You can get discounts for bulk purchases. Uh, right, uh, people say, Rob, where do you get this information from? You, you know, there's some sort of secret information, some sort of secret club. No, as I read these things, they're called books. Right? Uh, I know most of the people in this room will read books, you know, but a lot of people out there don't. So for the sake of the camera, that's called a book. Right? It's got words in and pictures, but that, that's a series book, it doesn't have pictures in it, yeah? And they cost money, but you can get them for like two, three quid on Amazon. Second hand books, you can buy them. I'm not I'm promoting Amazon here, but you can, you have your, your local, your, your local courts will give away books for free, the old books for free. You can go to your local charity shops, and that's where the information is. You have no idea, all the stuff I'm talking about just now, it's all in books. Uh, I was actually reading a book, uh, uh, two weeks ago there, if I'd read this four years ago, it would have saved me a lot of time. And it's by a chap called Kevin Cahill. He was an officer in the Irish Army, officer in the British Army, did some international humanitarian protection work, and now he's an investigative journalist. He's an elderly gentleman now, he's an investigative journalist. He wrote a book called Who Owns the World? I would urge everybody in this the room to go and get a copy of Who Owns the World? I promise you, you'll be gobsmacked. And he'd done another one called Who Owns Britain? Uh, and I, I promise you, read these books, and they're written for us. They're written in layman's terms. You know, there's no legal stuff in there. And I promise you, you'll be absolutely gobsmacked. Uh, I was going to ask a question: Who do you think owns Britain? But I've already said that the Queen legally owns all. You're only a tenant, and that's how these buggers get you, because you're only a tenant. And what they do is they levy what was called distress upon you. Distress is what's levied against tenants for rent. Yeah, so, what is your council tax? Okay, I think that's the wrong way around. I think uh, time for change is needed where we take control of the land and we assert that we are in charge of the land, we own the land. In America, they've got absolute property title. They can own the land, absolutely. In Britain, we can't because it's owned by the Queen. All we've got is the use of the land. And when you buy a property, you think you own it. You own the right to use that land. And the buildings above it may belong to you, but you've got the right to use the land. The land does not belong to you. So the people that have paid the mortgages often think, own, own, own my house, you own the house. You don't own the land that's on. So you've got to pay your rent for living on the land. Property tax, as they call it in some countries, for uh, uh, the use of the land. So have a think of that next time you're out in the garden. 
Uh, also interesting, if you go to the 18, here's an interesting one, 1835 Drainage Act is a paragraph in there, I've told my head, I can't remember it, uh, but it says any tributary flowing into an inland waterway is deemed to be part of an inland waterway. Maritime law, yeah? Uh, think about next time I sit in the toilet. That's what I get, you guess. Multi jurisdiction. This council tax thing is multi jurisdiction. That's why it's so, so difficult so far for uh, uh, to pin it down because it's multi jurisdictional. It's uh, civil law, it's private law, it's administrative law, it's uh, maritime law, it's military law. It comes under a whole raft in county politics as well, I suppose. And uh, franchise law as well, because the co county of Lancaster is a franchise and Greater Manchester. Uh, these are all franchises, so it's multiple jurisdictions, so if you, if you nail them in one jurisdiction, just swap it on you. They, they say the judges, don't, the law is there for them to abuse and use, to, to, to batter us into submission and uh, create the little slaves. Anyway, uh, so just, uh, just to get out to remind the guys, that's called a book. Buy some. At the moment, I, I buy, I've got very limited income, I buy two books a week. Right? Or get donated books, but I'll, I'll read two books a week. Right, in a year, that's you know, 52 weeks, I'm reading 100 books a year. And uh, you need to learn how to read books as well, because a lot of people don't know how to read books. Anyway, so uh, we'll talk about this one. So again, this is from 2015-2016, a council tax bill. I'll go back to that word bill, right? Uh, and it says Wigan Council on it. And on the back, no, oh, look, our bank account has changed. Right, and it's got a bank number, Barclays Bank, sort code, account number. Is it a bank? Is it an account name? What are they trying to avoid doing? Giving me more information. They're not testifying against themselves. So uh, there's a the thing, look at your own. I mean, just examine your own council tax demands. Is it the same thing? Is there different names on it? Account numbers with no name? Would you pay a contractor to give you that? Is there anyone in here involved in the industry? You're, 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 would you pay a contractor to give you that? No. Fact. Under the UK Convention for Criminal Corruption, it states that natural persons, which is us, right, in the world, natural persons are held responsible for the activities of the legal person, right, which means if you, and there's bribery, uh, uh, trade and influence, and money laundering is the three, fraud's not in there, fraud's not a criminal corruption apparently now, uh, but uh, so if but as money laundering is one to focus on, so if you do find out that you've been giving money to someone and the money's getting laundered and end up in criminal hands, which it is, uh, and ended up in potentially terrorist hands, uh, you are criminally uh, liable for it. Remember that when you're talking to the council next, or talking to any of these bodies, ask where your money is going to. You do not part with money until you get full assurance and a full accounting. Exactly every penny of that is going to where it's intended. None of it is falling into uh, private criminal hands. And as we saw in uh, Ukraine, the city regions have taken over the country. Now you really do need to read up city regions. City regions have taken over our country now. Uh, Ukraine had little city regions. You remember when the, the first revolution happened over there? I hate the word revolution, because you end up back to where he started from, just with different guys running the show. Uh, but the, 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 the first revolution happened over there. He found out, he, he became confused who were the police or not. It turned out it was private security were running the city. And the private security were hired by the family who run the city, who controlled the council, and everyone was working for them. And this is the problem with city regions, guys. It's all for Greater Manchester, it's the most secretive organisation I've ever come across. Why are they so secretive? What are they hiding? Right? Uh, I've got to be very careful what I say now. It's just there's a lot of foreign investors, private equity firms, and they're tapping into private funds, which we're not supposed to know about. Uh, and not one of them is actually elected by us. They're all appointees by their mates. Okay? Uh, and uh, so the city regions are wide open to criminal infiltration. And ultimately, the city regions, the government will sell these, they're the greatest idea in the world, they're brilliant, they're bringing democracy to people, right? Uh, sorry for the language, but bullshit. What that is, is creating, creating an absolute organisation which is ripe for takeover by criminal gangs. And if it's not happened already, it's happening. There was an article last year in The Telegraph uh, where they actually said that the Metropolitan, every single establishment Metropolitan, that's the whole justice, justice system, sorry, microphone builders, uh, justice system, the police, every single institution in the city of London has been so infiltrated by uh, uh, criminal gangs that they're uh, no longer fit for purpose, was I believe the terminology they used, and this came from a government committee. If it's happened in London, 
what's happened and what's happened up here. Who's that? When the frackers are here, who's actually making the decisions? Because I tell you now, it's not the councillors. Councillors are now kind of irrelevant. There, there's an advisory committee now, and I'd say that Parliament, our Parliament, House of Commons, and House of Lords now are there more, more advisory government rather than actually decision-making government. Okay, they're answering to the lobbyists, not to us. Uh, and, and interestingly, I did a, an FOI to the House of Commons. These little factoids, they, they, it's good information for people to know, right? This isn't stuff I've just dreamed up. I did a freedom of information request to the House of Commons and asked, what's the job title of an MP? Uh, can I have a copy of the job description? Because I didn't know what an MP did. Uh, uh, and also, can you tell me what the priorities are for an MP? And they come back and say, did you know there's no job description for an MP? Did you all know that? There's no actual formal job description for an MP. I was kind of nonplussed at that. But then they, they were kind enough to explain, there's some good people in the system, a few, very few, will actually give you information. The rest go to class, classes to learn how not to give us information. Uh, but the guy was quite open about it, that the priorities on MP1 is the economic well-being of the country, so that's the city of London. Two, the general well-being of the, the, the population, that's whatever the political parties decide to suit them. Three is the party. And fourth on the list is us, the electorate. Yeah. That's the MP's priorities. Fact, I've got it in black and white. The Localism Act pretty much says the same thing. Judges' decision making process is the same economic, economic well being, general well being, and then the law. That's why you get such strange decisions. So if a judge has decided that we can't let this guy win his council tax case in fraud because that, you know, it's, it would be damaging to the economy. He's going, even though the law says I'm right, and there's more of us. As, Hundreds of thousands of us around the country now challenging council tax, the legality of it, the judges are obliged to uh, 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 find against us because it economically damages the council, regardless that's built on fraud. And I would actually say now that Britain, this Britain we know, is so institutionally corrupt, and I'm not saying this just as a sort of throwaway comment from a lot of research from myself and other people. Every single sphere now of the British establishment is so institutionally corrupt and infiltrated by all sorts of private interests, it's no longer fit for purpose. It no longer serves us. We serve it, they think. And that's slavery. Anyway, so, right, so a bank account has changed. Uh, and they've got another thing, the New Deal. Uh, those who know American law, you might have aware of in the 30s, the New Deal. Uh, anyway, the New Deal. Roosevelt's New Deal, yeah. They're doing the same thing here. Uh, anyway, that's Keynesian economics, but I won't go into economics. Uh, ways to pay your bill, blah, 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 blah. And now it says, uh, uh, pay your direct debit, Wigan Council. And direct debit by Wigan Council. So in the front it says Wigan Borough Council, in the back of Wigan Council. That's this year again, right? So, anyway, uh, Wigan Borough Council. Okay, resources directorate. What the hell is it? That's no place in the council. That's the that's the, sorry, that's Wigan Council, the private company, the private trust. They should have resources directorate, customer services. Wigan Borough Council should have a proper name. Yeah, not a directorate. The word director. Where does that come from? Private companies. Uh, and a resource. Do you know, do you know what a resource? Do you know what the resource are referring to? Us. We reduce the resources. I find that personally obnoxious, uh, repulsive, repugnant. I'm reduced to, and the human, the, the, the European Union. I've read, I read a lot of their reports, and they actually refer to us as uh, 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 biological assets. I've actually read that in a report. Is that not the terminology of complete insane psychopaths who go to war and instead of killing a million people, will remove a thousand biological assets? Deductive from the balance sheet. This is what they've done. They've dehumanised us. We need to claim back that humanity, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm being serious here. We need to claim back that humanity because to me that's appalling. This is children. This is people we're talking about, right? Uh, so blah blah blah. Uh, Wigan Borough Council, but they've they, so apparently Wigan Borough Council's frozen the council tax, but it doesn't say. Anyway, but it's all confusing. Who the what they are? Uh, sorry, right. More nonsense that comes in. Uh, what I'll just point out here is it says at the top the resources director at customer services they've now removed Wigan Council. Used to see Wigan Council, they've now removed that because of us, right? So it's at the top there, it's unclear who it's come from, isn't it? It doesn't actually say who it's come from. That's because of us. Uh, then you see all the way through it. Uh, 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 da, 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 da. 
yeah, talk about it. So at the, at the hearing, the council will give evidence that it is the billing authority. Are you aware it's not the council who collects council tax? It's what's called the billing authority. If you read the council tax administration enforcement regs 1992, it's the billing authority that makes a complaint. It's the billing authority that does enforcement. Here's an interesting exercise. Write to your council and ask who the billing authority is. And you'll find that they'll refuse because the Data Protection Act is there to protect the identities of individuals. The billing authority is not an authority, it's not a, a body, it's not a council, it's one person. Okay? And that person is appointed or works for, or, or, or uh, qualified by a single institution, which won't mention for public, for various purposes, uh, but it's one single individual. Okay, so next time you think about council tax, it's nothing to do with the council, nothing to do with the council, it's a billing authority. And they're authorised by the Valuation Office Agency, who work for HMRC, who then work for the Treasury. So it's a whole chain of people all in the middle taking loads of money out of it, so very little gets to the top. Uh, but it's the billing authority. And uh, so when they say the Data Protection Act, Data Protection Act, the purpose of it was to bring transparency to institutions to protect interests of, private, uh, of individuals. So when they refused to give information, I did a complaint to the Information Commissioner's Office, and they upheld it. They upheld their side. Nope, you're not allowed to know who the, the, the billing authority is. I've got documents. One document says Wigan Borough Council is the billing authority. I actually phoned up the VOA, Valuation Office Agency, and asked a very nice gentleman, and he said he confirmed what it says in the Valuation Tribunal, that it's Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council is the billing authority. I then spoke to probably the most obnoxious woman I've ever spoke to in my entire life. Uh, from the VOA in Manchester, and uh, she said, uh, well, it's the Borough Council. I said, well, that's not the name of a company. I want the name of the company. It's the Billing Authority. And she said, well, it's, 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 it's the Billing Authority for, for Wigan. I said, is that the name of the company? Well, no, it's the... So she tried half a dozen different names. I'm like, what's their name? I just want a letter. If it was the Billing Authority, uh, so the VOA, the Valuation Office Agency, who values your property, uh, recognises XXX as the Billing Authority. Oh, my, just fill the gap in. I, you know, that's it, full stop, just fill the gap in. And she slammed the phone down to me four times, got very obnoxious, very rude with me. And uh, so anyway, she was refused, to, to, refused to answer that question. But at that point, the VOA did recognise Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council because these guys don't check the facts. OK? Uh, as I said, don't forget, these are the guys that are taking us to court and the court's accepting these complaints. So the court now are up to their eyeballs in this as well. They have absolutely screwed up beyond measure. Okay, so regardless of what happens in the courts or nonsense that happens in these hearings, it's the fact that the courts are accepting complaints from bodies and giving court privilege to bodies they haven't checked first if they've actually got authority. And a bailiff, when bailiff company will remain unnamed, a uh, guy came to the door, so uh, what you need to know is that the, 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 he's not a bailiff, he's a private debt collector. He may be a bailiff in another life, but he's a debt collector when he's in your private property. They're collecting a private debt. Ask him to see the warrant. He won't show him one, at which point you escort him off your premises. Tell him there's two ways he can end up on that footpath. He's now, and then they phone the police and make a, a, a complaint of civil, civil trespass. Okay? Uh, and then what you do is you, you then use follow the, the civil procedures and rules and do the pre-action protocol for uh, uh, professional negligence because the imagine director of that bail company should be checking if the body who's instructing him has got authority to do what they said they're doing in the first place. They didn't. They go away. But they go away because most other people just pay because they're all afraid. The big guys bang the door. Oh, how much do I have to pay? And they come to a deal, you know, because they think it's the right thing to do. It's not, you've just been scammed. Anyway, so uh, this is uh, this letter. I won't take through the whole letter, sorry. But just pointing out, it says there, Wigan Borough Council, and then it says there, uh, uh, at the, to avoid giving the specific name, at the hearing on the 17th of September, it will be the council's application. They start using this, the council, a lot, to avoid saying which council. And I respond straight back, which council? And they don't, they don't want to answer that right. But it does say there, uh, they're trying to say, I'm, I'm questioning the different names. And they've come back. What's happened is some bright spark lawyer a couple of years ago drafted out some responses to shut these bloody troublemaker peasants up, yeah? What they do is these guys haven't got a clue what they're doing, they're repeating this stuff, even though it's actually not answering the question. And actually giving us the information we want, proving that they're talking utter nonsense. But he says there, uh, the Metropolitan District Names Order 1973 provides that Wigan Metropolitan District, so they've added the word Metropolitan in there, shall bear the name Wigan. It doesn't say that, it says, anyway, 
Uh, since 1st of April 74, the council's name has been Wigan Borough Council. Uh, this is its formal name that has been using the council seal, because I've now read my stuff and you know I'm waiting for this. So I went, yeah, okay, that's good, okay. And the legal documents, no, because I've got bills there that say Wigan Council on them, so they've lied. I've got loads of legal documents. Any other, any more people in from Wigan here, you've had legal documents that have got other names in Wigan Borough Council on them. Uh, right, however, the council, now they're using the council to avoid giving specifics, uh, has used the name Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council and more recently Wigan Council on its letterheads. That is an admission of fraud. Absolute admission of fraud. Council vehicles and signage, etc. But its legal title has remained Wigan Borough Council. Now, that's fine then. So at the bottom of that, I should say Wigan Borough Council trading as Wigan Council or Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. Shouldn't, shouldn't it? Doesn't say that. Uh, we've got a recent FOI. I mean, I'm very limited in time here. We've got a recent Freedom of Information request. Uh, and in there have confirmed. Now, I spoke to a chap called Paul McEvitt, a senior uh, finance officer for Wigan Council, and asked him what is the relationship between what, what is Wigan Council. And in a very shaky voice, he said, Well, we're, we're an unincorporated corporation, thinking I'm some sort of dumbass, which I am, you know. Uh, however, I do, I do read some books. And I said, Well, is that a trust or a private, is a, a, a corporation sole or a, you know, a, a, a sole trader? What are we talking about here? He, he, he didn't answer the question. Uh, they think we are stupid, and you find out that we are actually not the stupid ones. They are. They are just repeating junk they've been given. Now that is an admission. Now he says Wigan Wigan Council is just a brand name for Wigan Borough Council. I get told that on the phone. I swear, hand on heart, on the phone. I've got the recording at home. He said Wigan Council is the the, the brand name, a rebrand of Wigan Borough Council. That's what they say on the FOI. They've confirmed that there's no brand names. These people will lie, because they're so deep in the shit now, and they know it, they know it, right? They are now panicking. They will lie to you, right? They've also the question of who issues the summonses, who issues the liability order, under what authority. Uh, Her Majesty's Court, where well, the local court doesn't know. They say nothing to do with us. We know nothing about these summonses and liability orders. Nothing to do with us. We have no record of them. What you'll find out is that the, the, the real court stuff happens on the database. They've got a database there, right? And um, we won't talk about that, we could do. Uh, so the real, you know, that, what that is, is auditable, because it's on the database, it's auditable, because all this is financial, this is all financial, don't, don't think this is the law, this is all about money, this is moving money from account to account, raising assets and debt obligations and uh, bringing surety, surety money in, etc. Uh, however, the council tax stuff, and I've got this confirmed from somebody in the court, right, in the local court, is in hard copy under the counter. Why is that? Because it's not on the system. Right? So, the, the officially, the magistrate's court go, don't know anything about this. However, on this FOI, Wigan Council are partly talking about half of Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council and Wigan Borough Council now, they haven't got authority to do that, have confirmed that that's not an issue. They're, they're doing it under, uh, under authority from the, on behalf of the court. Somebody's lying. This is big stuff, guys. This isn't small. This isn't stuff you go away and go, well, well you know, TV's on tonight or I worry about spacemen and whatever as you, as, you, as you read up on. This is serious, serious stuff. Who is issuing these summonses where big men are coming around to people's houses, right? They're frightening the crap out of families. The private companies are getting this so-called debt sold to them. They've got children, I've seen it, children terrified, huddled in the corner, screaming. You've got women sitting there on their knees, crying their eyes out. That's what these guys want, right? Have, no, they're coming away clamping people, well, taking people's cars and threatening to take their goods and as soon as you open the door they're in there and they grab your goods and it goes away for sale and my god is this bloody Nazi Germany or is this Britain? This has got no place in the modern world. These are not public people, these are private companies, right? They're, the bosses, and I've seen them, are driving big fancy cars, big fat, I'll be polite, blokes. Uh, because they're eating so much good food, you know, and they're, they're going to holidays, and they've got the holiday homes in Portugal and Spain and wherever, you know. They are living a good life, and it's blood money. This is absolute blood money. 40% of the people there in poor, poor, poor families can't afford to pay council tax, and these guys are absolutely ruthless. I've met them. What they're not prepared for is guys coming to their own, grabbing by the throat and fucking them off the property. Right? You draw a line, that's public and private. And the public, you can do what you want. This is private. This is my law, this side of the line. Right? People need to get toughen up these guys. Acting teams, acting groups, yes.
ask him for a copy of the warrant. Yeah, yeah, this happens at Mexican Capital, Capita, Capita Clicks TV license, yes. Yeah, so these guys are very good at what they, they do. However, the laws have changed now, protecting us from the, let's call it, I'll call it as criminal practices of these guys. Uh, and you need to wait, you need to sort of look into this. There's a few YouTube videos on it. There's of busters out there are doing talks on the subject, right? These guys are horrible, horrible individuals, right? And I have no time for them. Scum, scum. You know, people have been driven to suicide. I got a phone call uh, two, three years ago. It's at the blue, and this woman phoned up. And she said, my name, I won't give the name, uh, from Manchester. She goes, I'd just like to thank you and your mates. She said, I've just got your number here. Somebody's passed it to me for the work you're doing. I said, I'm not doing any work. I'm just looking at it. She said, no, she, I've got to thank somebody. She says, because as she says, I came uh, to visit my daughter in her flat. She's a student. I came to visit my daughter in a flat and found her hanging. She'd hung herself off the, 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 the shower rail, 22 years old, stunningly beautiful, apparently. And she'd been there for three days in the summer. So you can imagine that wasn't the most pleasant experience here. And she says, she says, and she just nobody, nobody was interested. She then found you guys and they realised there's a whole community out there of people that do care. She says, so she says, I realised if my daughter had found you guys, uh, she could have, she could have, uh, uh, you, you would have done something to stop it. Do you know what she was in debt for? She took her life, three and a half grand. This young lady, university student, A class student, good looking, took her life, three and a half grand debt because of the, 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 the threat she was getting off these bailiff letters, these debt collection agency letters. Yeah, that's what her life was worth, three and a half grand. I wish she had come to us first. Yeah, so just, just a, it's a more serious note, you know. I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay sort of upbeat here, but I mean, this is a very serious issue. Right, so we've got these lying toads, right? Uh, and I'll flick through this, right, direct gov, right, uh, valuation list, so you can check, you know, numbers and one thing or another, uh, you can check who the billing authority is, now because of us, it used to say Wiggy Metropolitan Borough Council, and because of us, and you'll find this is for all of you, all the boroughs now, it just says the fallen properties and the Wigan local authority, they don't mention the name of the company that runs the council now, used to, that's because of us. Uh, Wigan and Lee Magistrates Court, someone's non payment of council tax, all the usual guff there, right? Wigan Borough Council has asked me to issue a summons against you, right? But it's not them that were asking for the payment, was it? It was Wigan Council was asking for the payment. Uh, and when I went into the court outside, as I say, the, the case was listed as Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council versus blah, 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 blah. Uh, the chap when he came in was appointed by Wigan Council and he asked to change the name to Wigan Borough Council. What the hell is going And the judge wasn't interested in this. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, call me fucking Mickey Mouse, sorry. Call me Mickey Mouse, if we're just using any making names up, call me Mickey Mouse. But I'd be breaking the law for that and I'd get, I'd get sent down for that, wouldn't I? But these guys are the law. And what happens in these uh, city, city regions is, there's reasons called Liverpool Police and City uh, Greater Manchester Police, because they serve Greater Manchester. They don't serve us, they serve the guys running Greater Manchester, as we saw in Ukraine. So unless we, we, we really need to put a foot down and get a grip of these guys, right, so... Uh, I won't talk about the Justice Clark, so, well, very briefly, right? Uh, Justice Clark, if you hear anything other than Justice Clark, or Assistant Justice Clark, you've no idea what they are. If you go onto the legislation.gov website, you'll find that there's uh, uh, orders uh, uh, given the, the, uh, the, the, the job description and what the powers are of a Justice Clark and an Assistant Justice Clark, nothing else. So if you get letters from legal team advisor, legal team reader, deputy Justice Clark, you've no idea what that is. But people reply to them. You have no idea. And I would urge you, when somebody writes to you, ask him for a copy of, because I haven't formally introduced themselves to you. My name's John Smith, I'm Resources Director, who are, right, okay. Can I have a copy of your code of conduct? Can I have a copy of your insurance policy? If you're a practicing private, a private a practicing professional, can I have a copy of your bond, your insurance bond? Uh, can I have a copy of your, your job description, a copy of your company policy? Now we can talk, because I know who you are. I know where the lines are, what you can and can't do, and I know where my rights are. Now I'm protected. How many people in the room have done that? They, they want to know who you are, don't they? My God, if you don't give, tell me who you are. Right, uh, so just these clerks sign these and you'll find it's uh, one guy does a whole of Lancashire now called uh, uh, Draper. He does a whole northwest uh, region now because it's been regionalised. This chap Draper, uh, who's very difficult to pin down. Not, no, I phoned up and you can't quite pin down where he's based, if he exists. Anyway, uh, but you'll find that's just a stamp that the council apply themselves. The council's council issues these. 
not the court. The council issues these, not the court, and they apply a signature. So I wrote to him, can I have a copy of the agreement between Mr Norman Draper and the council, authorising the council to choose a signature, no reply. That's a four or five letters, friends have written that, no reply. Can I have a copy of the agreement that says he can sign that, they, they can, you can use the signature? No. I'll explain why in a minute, you'll find out why in a minute, right? Uh, so on the back of this, summons Wigan Council. What does it say at the front there? Wigan Borough Council has asked me to ask summons against you. What the silly buggers haven't done is change the back. It's exactly the same as what we got with the Wyborough Council and Wyre Council. And they don't ours, change ours yeah, a legal advisor is different. Different. Uh, he's acting under different uh, uh, insurance. So, if you read the council tax uh, 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 administration fortune regs, it's only a justice clerk or a, a justice of the peace, a justice clerk or an assistant justice clerk can accept a complaint. Nobody else, unless you agree about it. So, if you accept a complaint from a legal advisor, you get a two-word response to it. And I actually went into the court with Dead Dave, uh, mate of mine. Uh, into Wigan Lee Magistrates Court, and there was a previous guy there called uh, uh, Justice Clark Brian Hartley, a right, very pompous gentleman. I'm sure, he's a lovely guy in real life. I'm sure he's a lovely family man, and he's not destroying people's lives and being a complete shit, right? Uh, I'm sure he's a lovely man. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure his Freemason Lodge will love him to death for the good work he's done, right? But uh, he, well, I went into the court, and when I go in, I get surrounded by security because I'm partly I'm public enemy number one. I get, I get armed, I get a tactical response, shouldn't it mean my wife me going to argue little cases? Uh, but anyway, so the, uh, I just walked in, so I said, oh, just can I just speak to Mr. Brian Hartley? Yeah, okay. So eventually this guy came out, who, who wishes to, to, to address me? Who is it wishes to address me? And maybe I'm overdoing the pompousness, maybe it was just about half a notch under that. Who wishes to address me? Uh, maybe it wasn't as high as that. But uh, I say, it's me, sir. I say, I say, I say just, just a simple question I've got to ask. Well, yes, I'm a busy man. What is it? I says, uh, What's your job title? Joey you know ran out of the room. This is this is the foyer. He ran out the foyer. It was a doo -doo, double door slammed behind him. He was, doo -doo, he was going. Security guards. What the hell just happened there? Two lawyers, and two two solicitors were there as well. What happened there? I said, "We've just seen his fraud because he was signing one letter as senior legal team leader and the other ones as justice clerk." And I've got a letter from him. It's difficult to make sense of it, to be honest. It's written in complete gibberish. But he's, it looks like he's appointed himself as his own assistant. This is them dodging the liability, guys. This is them trying... Because, remember, they are under a private professional bond. And if you make a professional negligence claim against them, they're a bond and premiums go through the roof. So they're trying to palm it off to the legal advisor who comes under HMCTS, as far as I'm aware, right? Uh, so they're trying to pass the buck onto someone else. So, uh, there you go. Ways to pay. It's the same document as the summons. Ways to pay. Blah, 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 blah. Your digit, your your twelve digit account reference. I don't have a twelve digit account. They do. How many people challenge it in your letters? It's not my account. It's yours. Nothing to do with me, right? What you do when you write your letters, you start going through this and say, nope, nope, no, nope, I rebut that, rebut that, rebut that. What does that number mean? What does that mean? What does that sign mean? Blah blah blah, right? Uh, but it says pay by debit or credit card, twenty four hours a day. That's lovely, isn't it? It's really helpful of them using Wigan Council's payment line. Right. This is proof of posting. This was in court. I asked for the disclosure of this. So I got it, I wanted to have confirmation that we'd, who'd, who'd sent me these letters. And it's a uh, proof of posting, uh, handed to a representative of the Royal Mail by a member of the operations support team, read private contractor, employed by Wigan Council for a court hearing. So Wigan Council seems to be sticking his nose into somebody else's business now, doesn't it? Big time. Right. Uh, and then we've got a certificate of computer evidence. If you're asking for any documents from them, always ask for the computer evidence. Because every, every document is produced goes through a, a process, right? If it's a legal document, we've we'll gone through a computer process, and a, a quality assurance manual guiding what comes out at the end of it. You should be asking for a copy of that, because if somebody just gives you a bit of paper with no supporting evidence, it's a, you know, a, 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 it comes from a database, uh, I might as well just have done it in my back bedroom at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. Uh, so I asked for it, and I got a certificate of computer evidence. What does it say at the top? Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. Okay. And it's Penny Higgins' creature. Oh. Anyway. This woman seems to have every job. She's head of IT, print services manager, digital mail supervisor, repo graphics supervisor, print supervisor, awards and taxation manager. So I don't think there's any, more, any other managers in this place. She seems to have done it all. Uh, yeah, she has a very high wage. Yeah, very high opinion of herself. 
Uh, I hope she likes lesbians. You're going to be seeing a lot of them in prison shortly. Uh, <laughs> right, so then this is proof of posting again, and it says the same thing Operation Support Team, Wigan Council. Right, and the complaint of the Wigan Borough Council. That word there is in capital letters. What does that mean? Different name, isn't it? Different company. I've challenged them on that. Never, never did a response. Never responded. I went in the court and said, I don't know who they are. And so, why are they talking to me for? That's not the complaint. The complaint is not the Wigan Borough Council, the Wigan Borough Council. Clever little trick to use. Right? And then you say, the billing authority. But Wigan, the Wigan Borough Council can't be the billing authority. It can't be the billing authority. Because uh, we've confirmed it's Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council as a billing authority. But it's Wigan Council who's trying to talk themselves as if they're a billing authority. They're bringing the case and demanding the money. So, why is the, so we've got four different names now. There's another one as well, we haven't heard yet on here in this. The Metropolitan Borough of Wigan Council is another one. So it's five. And if you go on dunnandbradstreet.com, don't go on the British one, it's been sanitised. Go on the American one, dnb, dunnandbradstreet.com, and type in your council name. So say, well, where was it? Wire. Wire. Wire, wire council. Wire I'll remember this, sorry. <laughs> well, if you type in the two words wire and council and just read what comes up, right? It won't cost you anything to do a search for just names, yeah? And it's more interesting we pay the money to get the, 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 the digital uh, uh, print out for the uh, credit check on them because you find out who actually owns them. And you'll find this company. Wigan Borough Council apparently, and here this latest FY is confirmed, they don't have a trading address in the UK, right? And yet they own another company. You know? They're based in the Cayman Islands, Russia, China. Is this ISIS? Is this Al Qaeda? I don't know, because not only you ask a member, building the thought in, in court in November, I said to the judge, this guy who started talking to us, I'm not interested, in, who are you? Well, my name's, I don't give a shit. What are you? What is your role here? Who do you, who, are you the billing authority? He said, I'm not obliged to disclose that. And I said to the judge, I want disclosure. So I'm not, I mean, I've got this thing from the, 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 the Freedom of Information request. It was refused to identify who the billing authority was. So to put us in perspective, guys, somebody writes a letter to us and says, give me a thousand pounds a year. Or else we send big guys around to terrify you and nick your stuff, right? Trespassing your property and terrify your family. And you go, well, who are you? We're not obliged to tell you that. Right, okay. So you're bringing a court case. Yep, who are you? Can't tell you that either. But you're the prosecutor. I'm allowed to know who it is that's prosecuting me. Just ring a bell for people to understand constitutions. You're allowed to know your accuser. Just tell you how absolutely screwed up we are in this country now that we've now got prosecutors, prosecution in, the, in these hearings, these private hearings in the court renting the rooms out to, we're able to ask who it is that's demanding the money or who it is that's actually taking us to court. As I said to the judge in November, his name could be so, Benny Bandy from Nigeria. I have no idea who he is. If the Nigerian, sorry, what do they call them, 471 scam, or whatever it's called, scam merchants, or the Russian mafia found it, they could just send people billing, uh, council tax bills, and we're not able to ask who they are. The criminals of a field day. I would suggest they're already having a field day. Right? And we're talking vast amounts of money here. Uh, and the judges thought that apparently that was quite acceptable. Okay, I don't. I like, if somebody's taking me to court, I like to know who they are. But it's officially from the Information, information Commissioner's Office, I'm not allowed to know who the billing authority is. Nobody in this room is. And when you do ask them, you find I've got six different documents saying six different names. Right? So, Justice Clark Society, right? They shut their day down. I, I, I broke this document back in 2013 on Friday morning, 10 o'clock, contacted all the bloggers, all my mates that there, all the websites. Get this up there, this is the key document. And uh, at four o'clock afternoon, they pulled the plug in themselves. And for a short period of time, a few days, they, because they pulled the plug in themselves, were obliged to display some information on Company's House website, right? Uh, you couldn't find anything in Company's House before that, but you suddenly found that there were more directors in there, going out and out the doors, and there's you know, uh, shoppers going out of an Asda front door on a Saturday afternoon. What were they seeing? They didn't want to stay too long. They had v hordes of people going in there like that. Oh, don't like that. Bugging off again. What were they seeing? Uh, I'll tell you what they were seeing. Fraud. Because this is a Justice Clark Society, a private limited company, telling Justice Clark, forget the law, forget your human rights, forget your constitution. These guys have decided how they're going to run these courts and telling, telling the, the magistrates and the judges how to conduct the hearings. Who the hell are they to be stepping over my constitution my rights, my freedoms, and all of in this room, right? They're a private, for-profit company, right? Uh, and you know what a Justice Clark is. 
And it was basically say, I won't read through it, it's on the, it's on the Freedom Northwest uh, website, file section, all this stuff is. Uh, it says, do this, do that, you know, how to issue a summons, blah, 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 right. But at the bottom it says, uh, uh, the council's software generates liability orders. The council's software generates liability orders. I can stop the talk at that point before we stop and walk away, leave, leave you wondering that one. So who's issuing liability orders, the court or the council? The Justice Park Society has said the council's uh, uh, software issues liability orders. Uh, these may be uh, rubber stamped or pre-printed with the Justice Clark, Clark signature. There is no requirement for a wet ink signature. Right, and there's test cases with a wet ink, I'm not going to go into that. But, uh, these, so the Justice Clark Society is telling Justice Clarks what they can and can't do in the court, right? There's a thing called human rights. Right to fair and impartial tribunal hearing and all this good stuff. But yeah, that's a, I guess the way they're making money. Right, uh, final one. The court and its staff should not give the impression that the council is in charge of the process. <laughs> Do you understand why they, shut the, why they pulled the plug themselves at four o'clock? And people out there thinking, oh, you guys don't achieve much. We pulled that down in one day. And they've now reinvented themselves. The same name, Justice Class Society, just a new invention. And I'm sure it's registered uh, elsewhere where we can't get access to any information about them now. So, conspiracy theorist. Uh, here's an interesting one. Uh, those, how many people have been to court for some of these for council tax? How many people have actually been taken to court? How much did you pay fees? I, I didn't get through the door. Yeah, I, did, did I, what was the fees? That's the only question I'll ask. What was the fees? I didn't pay any fees or nothing because I didn't go into damn court. He, he asked me if I had a knife. And yeah, no, I'm, yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got limited time. I've not been rude yet. What was the fees they were asking for? Has anyone else been, been a summons or a liability order? How much? Five. Oh, you're all very good, well behaved people. I'm talking to the wrong crowd. Yeah, they had about right. 40 pounds they put on, yeah. Right. Yeah, they did put it on my dad's, but I can't remember how much it was. And Wigan, it's 65. And around the country, seen as high as 90 quid. Fees Amendment Order 2014. Now, prior to this, this was not actually written in law. However, a Conservative MP lady, a few years before that, had asked the question because of one of our guys in the Parliament what is the fees that can be charged for a liability order, for, issue, for the complaint in a liability order? And uh, it came back in the House of Commons, three quid. Right? So uh, that disappeared off the net, so we couldn't reference. Find as soon as we find some sanitised off the net. Right? However, this uh, last year they made it. Law, if you like the law, you call it law. Order, military word, doesn't it? Uh, liability orders, blah, blah, blah. Proceedings under the Council Tax Enforcement Regs for the non domestic rating, right? Collection and enforcement, local lists, regulations. So it's a local list now uh, on an application for a liability order. Three quid. I say to the judge, they're charging 65. On that complaint, if you noticed earlier on, there's 2,062 names, all been charged 65 quid each. You know, uh, mathematics, that's 130 grand. It should have been three quid. So I think, I think, you know, not being a legal expert, that's quite well into serious fraud territory. Partly not for council tax. Judge, I thought that was acceptable. No problem. These poor, hard working people in the council, you know, they're so struggling. Yeah, they're quitting fraud. F struggling isn't an excuse for fraud. You try using that in court, I dare you. I've been struggling, sir. Yeah, you can struggle in jail, but not for the council. There they go. And they'll say, yeah, but that's our cost, our internal cost. I don't give a shit about your internal cost. That's the cost. That's the cost. Three quid, right? They can only, remember, the judge can only issue costs after he's made the decision. They're coming in previously, and this is Bill of Rights stuff, you can't be previously found guilty of an offence. They're coming in previously hearing saying this is the costs. As if they already knew there was going to be an outcome, agreed. Well, we should wonder, doesn't it? So, for those who don't know this, right, I can promise you, if you want to start on this journey, right, forget all the spacemen and, you know, wherever, wherever it is. And this is for the, for the people out there, right, and conspiracy stuff. That's just, that's just, you know, I know it's interesting, occasionally I'll wander into as well, it's solving no problems, it's not saving lives, it's not going to change things, right? Uh, that's what they want us to do is be dis distracting all some of this stuff, right? I know something's fascinating. I went to Bigfoot myself, but, you know, I keep that to my... Uh, but what do, what do you know .com, right? I would urge people, because rather than reading uh, this, all this stuff on the internet, right, you can go to this internet, what do you know .com. This is the Freedom of Information website, public freedom of information requests. 
Type in your council and read the freedom of information requests. If you want to rule that, put in Wigan Council. Right. They actually refuse. They actually refuse to do any more freedom of information requests to me because I'm causing distress and alarm to the members of the staff. <laughs> and my response to that was that's usually case you're investigating fraud. So what do they know? Dot com. Please, I, I'll just repeat it again. What do they know? Dot com. Right. Go in there and check. Just type in the search box council tax and spend a month reading through it. Right. All the questions you need answered are already answered in there. Right. You don't need to come to these meetings. Right. It's all answered in there. Okay. So. Uh, right, so if you go and watch the know.com, here's an interesting recent development. It used to say Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. So you, there's no way of putting a, a freedom of information request to Wigan Borough Council, the real council. You had to do, only do it through Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. Strange, because they apparently have no, no corporate status, remember, I got an FOI. They have no corporate status. So they're also called Wigan Council. I thought they weren't a brand name according to this. Free latest FY, there's no brand name. So what the hell is going on there? I can call myself Wigan Council if that's the case. In fact, if this is here, I'm going to send you all bills and you're going to bloody pay them. Because I'm now Wigan Council, right? Uh, here's an interesting one. This was for this hearing back in November. We got this, uh, what they call a skeleton argument. Total crap, right? Where most of this stuff comes from, total crap. But we forced them to do this, right? And it says, uh, a council tax demand notice, often referred to as a bill, was issued to you, blah, 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 blah. Right, I'll just repeat that. A council tax demand notice, also referred to as a bill. Right, a bill must comply with the Bills of Exchange Act. That's a clear black and white word. When they're actually using the wrong word for it, it's called fraud by misrepresentation. Right, it's not a bill, it should be called a demand, a council tax demand. You ask for an invoice. You ask for a receipt, you don't get one because it's not a bill. It's private demand. Okay. Anyway, uh, I can go a bit deeper on that, but I won't keep it simple, right? But it says one public authority found, Metro Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. But they have no corporate status. How can they be an authority? And the word authority is uh, author, orders, military word again, uh, and, co and common law word. One person found, Wigan Council. So it's not a person? I'm st you know, uh, anyway. Right, so, I mean, I won't go through it, but it talks about uh, Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council has no corporate status. That's a freedom of information request, response. They've said it has no corporate status. Full stop. I point out to a judge, ah, it doesn't matter. Who cares? At that point, I'm just like, who am I, am I supposed to bow or do that? Because literally, this is the stage we're at, guys, seriously. When the judges are standing there, allowing this kind of conduct, we're not talking about a couple of quid here, we're talking hundreds of hundreds of millions of people, of pounds of people's money. And a lot of it goes into private funds. Now, somewhere, somebody did an FOI, and I think it was somewhere between 45 and 60% of the council tax money goes to the, the, the public pension funds, because a lot of them are so badly mishandled. But no, they don't take a hit, as you would if you were a private pension. No, 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 no. What do is it hit the taxpayer? Go and, go and frighten a few more babies and terrify a few single mothers to pay their pension fund. Did you know the Greater Manchester Pension Fund, this is from the 10 constituent councils, has a value. I'll say this slowly, people don't quite understand this, right? Say it slowly so you understand it. £12.8 billion. Pounds. This is from their own finance report. Greater Manchester Pension Fund has a value at this point in time, £12.8 billion. Pounds. How many effing employees do they have? Is that not enough? Have they not got enough now to serve them in perpetuity? No, they've still got to scam us. Because these guys, once they start taking money, find it very... Because remember, an accountant's job, private company's job is what? To make a profit? We're not letting the customer off. Customers, remember, we're not going to let the customer off. So they've got us paying for this. That's called slavery, right? When you're, when you're being forced... I mean, I don't mind paying for services. I'm happy to pay for services. I'm happy to pay my way. Of course I am. I'm not going to dodge anything. You know, the roads need repair. The street lights need fixed. I have no problem with that, yeah? What I've got a problem with is now I've got a gun held to my head and I've got lying, deceiving, deceiving judges and scam merchants behind the scenes, right? Holding a gun to my head to pay somebody else's pension. Right? When they've actually got vast reserves in more than most small countries in Greater Manchester alone. What do they need that pension money for? They don't. It's just these guys can't say, we've had enough, we've got enough money, we don't need any more money. Can you imagine somebody in the public sector saying that? We've got enough money, don't need your money, take it back. Right? But remember, this is crying babies and people cutting their wrists. 
okay, for money that isn't actually needed. Uh, one of the local councillors, who uh, independent councillor, who lost his seat at the last, the last election there, uh, went public and admitted that Wigan Council has got a private reserve fund, and this is a whole area. I'm not going to talk about it tonight in any depth. But they've got, a, they've got there's a thing called private reserve funds. So the budget, when you ask for a copy of the budget and you get these, it's, that's the public stuff. A lot of the money gets diverted into private reserve funds and other strange names, <coughs> which are off balance sheets, so we don't know about them. And Wigan Council's got one that we know of, probably more, worth ninety million pounds. Austerity for us, yeah, not for the guys there. They are living a good life. Ninety million pounds. Remember, a young lady cut her cut her wrist there for less than that, a lot less than that, yeah. A lot of people cut their wrists for a lot less than that. Nine, how many lives could that save? How many poor people out there? Forty percent of poor families out there are struggling to pay council tax, can't pay their council tax. That's one council alone has got ninety million pounds in reserve. And that's only one one fund we know about, there's a lot more. Uh, so you've got to question, do these guys actually need any money? Seriously, I've got to ask that question. Do they need have they not got enough money to play with? Uh, you know, they could, they could half council tax tomorrow, but that's not in the nature of the public sector. That's not in the nature. No, you can half the amount of money he pays. I mean, can you imagine anyone saying that? Can you imagine a tax man saying we're going we're gonna to half the tax? No. So anyway, uh, that response from Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. Remember, it says it was actually replied to by Wigan Council. Uh, this is a person I know wrote this one. Anyway, so I said, as Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council, the billing authority for Wigan Council tax, this is one from three years ago, so it's sort of date now, but it's just pointing out some stuff here. Uh, and what is the full name and address of the billing authority, and who is the named responsible person and job type with respect to representing the billing authority? Wigan Borough Council, Donna Hall, Chief Executive. Well, uh, that doesn't make sense. Who's, I know who Donna Hall is, she's the Chief Executive of Wigan Borough Council, but it doesn't say that, it's the wrong way around, it says Wigan Borough Council. And then it says Don Hall. So that makes it look like there's two different people there. So they've said the billing authority is Don Hall. Well, it's not. That's another lie. I've now got five billing authorities bringing cases against people and destroying people's lives. Anyway, so I mean, this is stuff. Well, I won't go through this in detail, right? But you can see there's, there's pages and pages and pages of freedom of information requests. And just browse them at your leisure. Browse them at your leisure. And I bet you were going, I had no idea. So vast all his money, and this is five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, asked the same questions, and still getting nonsense. Uh, friend of mine, uh, this was the original one he did, this is this one here. Original is a friend of mine, he uses the pseudonym Simon Dante. Uh, those who've seen V, you might understand the name Dante. He uses uh, Simon Dante, and uh, so he asked, which, this was a definitive final FOI, nailing him down, right? And uh, we found there's a thing called the Section 151 officer. And the executive, remember the local authorities made up of the council and the executive and parish councils, but the council and the executive, and the only one of the executive, none of the executive are public servants, none of them, not one, right? Uh, but there's one of them called the Chief Finance Officer, and under the, the 1972 regs, uh, he's also known as the Section 151 Officer. Section 151 of the 1972 Local Government Act, right? And you'll find he's, he's the only one who's got a duty of care to us. Wow. Now you can go for him. See, so what we're doing now, we've found this out recently. So what you can do is you now write, when you're writing to the council, the council tax, you're writing to the council, you write to the Section 151 Officer. Because what they've got us doing in the past is writing to the wrong bodies. It's clever, isn't it? They've got us writing to the wrong people. Right, so they can ignore it. So what you do is you write to Section 151 officer, put him in notice he has a duty of care under case law, which I won't go into, but he's got a duty of care under case law to us. And you hold them to that, right? Watch them shit themselves. Because they're not supposed to know this stuff. Right, so uh, anyway, so that's, that's the latest one on uh, whatdoknow.com from... Uh, uh, so he's, he's, he's queried all the different council names and the same questions, one thing or another. So it's page after page after page. Uh, anyway, just, I, I, won't flick, I won't go through these. I know it's an information dump. A GMC operating agreement. Now this is Greater Manchester Combined Authority, right? A legal body created under executive order in 1990, uh, 19, sorry, 2009 I believe it was. A GMCA was officially created under executive order from the Secretary of State, military words, all, all military words here. The state means the state of war or peace, that's what state means by the way. Uh, and it's just called the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Authority? Sounds very authoritarian. 
Uh, and it says there, at the very start of it, I read this shit. I read this stuff. Uh, operating agreement. The Borough Council of Bolton, Borough Metropolitan Borough Council, Council of City of Manchester, Oldham Borough Council, Rochdale Metropolitan Borough Council, Salford City Council, specific names are coming out with here. This is specific corporate names, right? Blah, blah, blah. And Wigan Borough Council. Right? So that's one of the constituent councils get in Manchester. So again, who's Wigan Council? Who's Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council? Because I should have said Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. I'm sure it did in years gone by. Uh, the first ones I read, I'm sure it said Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council. They've changed it. Again, probably because of us. Uh, right. They talk about a particular, an unincorporated the corporation I was talking about earlier. It's also known as a particular body. That's what this Wigan Council is, right? And it says in the... Uh, it's boring. I don't want to be doing this stuff. I really, I've got better things to do in my life. I've got a family, I've got a wife and family, and you know, I want to dogs to look after and stuff. I really want to build stuff, but I can't because I can't let this go. Right, uh, particular bodies under revenue, how much is revenue and customs? This is off their own .gov website, all the way from uh, 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 San Francisco. It says uh, the definition for revenue and customs of. Uh, says the company, blah, blah, blah. Any body, corporate or unincorporated association but does not include a partnership, a local authority or a local authority association. So they've defined themselves as being a particular, a particular body but says it can't be a local authority. So they have to be a private company or a private trust. Right? Uh, tyranny. Dulham, uh, Doom's Law Dictionary from Australia, I believe. A form of government, I just chose this at random, a form of government other than a monarchy, uh, in which the formal written constitution, think of your local authorities, that's the real power now, not national. They've got us to look at the actual government and voting for MPs thinking that's going to change anything. They're just a talking shop. The real power now has been devolved by Europe and the United Nations down to regional level. It's Agenda 21 in action. A form of government other than the monarchy in which the formal written constitution is not adhered to. Go back to Magna Carta if you want. And is broken by force of arms. Big guys coming round and beating you up with uniforms and badges and you will do what you're told, you're a disobedient slave. Uh, force of arms by a single person, Bill and Authority, who then undertakes to rule as a monarch and primarily in his personal interests. Now, uh, if you read the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it says where one is uh, last resort, where a, where a man has a last resort, has uh, was, was no recourse uh, other than to go into rebellion against tyranny and oppression. As she says that in Universal Decree. You've got the Universal Declaration right, so can you read that section out for us? It's in the preamble. Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, guys. Right, universal means public and private. It's in the preamble. Whereas, if man is not to be compelled as a last resort, paragraph two or paragraph three of the preamble. Is that, is that enough? That's enough. That's, that's enough, just the word tyranny. So I've given the definition of tyranny. This comes a law dictionary. Definition of tyranny. I've just explained to you guys this is tyranny. These city regions and all these little private clubs and gangs and cabals that's going on behind the scenes all laughing at us and thinking we are absolute morons. And many of us are. Most of us are. To be honest with you, uh, I've just given you a definition. I've just given you, I told you under the Universal Dec Human Rights, you've, you have the right to rebellion. How you do that? I choose not to use violence. I choose to rebel in a peaceful manner, but they want to piss off with their, 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 their legal private taxes. Uh, Governed by the rule of a tyrant and an arbitrary treatment of citizen, if not their systematic use of terror. Well, terror is what they're using. Big guys are kicking your door and threatening you. Right? They might look at terrorism as one thing. For us, terror is somebody's about to stand at my front door wearing, wearing black stab vests and crap badges that mean nothing, right? With no warrants or anything, buying, give me away here! Will you take your stuff? That terrifies my wife. Twice as reduced to tears, you know. That's terror. Having kids crying in the corner, that's terror, real terror. It's also called bullying, and I hate bullies. Nothing more I like more than batting a bully into submission. That's a lost teeth, by the way. That was a bully one day. I thought it was a bully. He came off worse, believe it or not. Uh, so the question remains unanswered. All this stuff I've given you here, isn't there? Four or five years of solid research, yeah? The question still answers, I don't know. Who and what the fuck is Wigan Council? I still don't know. Officially, freedom is in peril. Defend it with all your might. Magna Carta gave us, one thing it did give us, right, was habeas corpus. And habeas corpus is bring me the body, right? Just if somebody's imprisoned or, you know, whatever, bring me the body. And it was what was used to end slavery. 
right? The common law doctrine of habeas corpus, bring me the body. Is he an asset, a resource, or is he a man? We've already seen what they think about, is we resources, biological assets, or are you a man, right? That's what Magna Carta, that's the one thing Magna Carta, the rest of it, I don't really care. That's the one thing from Magna Carta, because that's the one thing that makes the air of England uh, uh, too pure to withstand the stench of slavery. I quote that from a test case, right? Numerous times it's mentioned. Uh, and we have to defend this guy's this habeas corpus with our lives, if need be, because do you trust the civil system to defend you against slavery? Do you know if they can word their way around something, they'll do it? It's the ideal, okay? Bring us the body of the man. I'm not your property. I'm not your asset. And that's what, the, that's what these private councils think we are as an asset. You look at the, the, the spreadsheets we're doing as assets, okay? No, I'm not. I'm your boss. Right, that's most of the British people. Is X Factor on? Right, and uh, Dignity Alliance stands against slavery, uh, forced servitude, involuntary servitude, slave trading, human trafficking. That's all we do. And I hope tonight you'll have seen what, by knowing this information now, you can either go away and think that was really interesting and never do anything about it, in which case, whinge and whine as much as you want, guys, seriously. Whinge and whine. I know, I know it's not this audience I'm actually talking to, it's that audience there, right? You can whinge and whine and sit. What used to call in the Soviet Union kitchen talk? Yeah, you can sit and whinge and whine in the kitchen. Oh, it's terrible what they're doing. Well, somebody needs to do something, right? Or you can do something. And all, is, all I've done is ask questions. All I've done is ask questions. And under the, 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 the UK Criminal Convention uh, on Criminal Corruption, uh, you have an obligation, criminal obligation, to do your fact check and find out who it is you're giving money to before you give them money. I've just given you that. Use that. See, I'm not going to give you any money until, I'm not refusing to give, never refuse. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to withhold the money until such times you can confirm to me who you are and where your authority comes from. And I'll promise you, you can ask most people out there, I'd, I'd say every single body I've asked so far, where's your authority come from? And when the boils down to it, it's because they, they can call them big guys. We Spiky sticks, sparky sticks, and bang sticks. It's force. Right? We're no longer governed by rule of law in this country. We're governed by corruption uh, 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 and force. That's it. Okay. So, on a more upbeat note, we can do this, guys. All you've got to do is start hammering, hammering them with freedom of information requests. Copy hours. Hammer them. These guys are bricking it. We've got some inside. Are bricking it at the moment, right? There was a chief executive of one of the big corporations in place in Britain. And he was asked a question recently, I think it was a Guardian article, uh, which, which, what's, your, what's your greatest fear? And he says, pitchforks outside my front door. They are terrified of it. I had a conversation, I won't mention the name, with uh, an official, and uh, during the conversation, he's lying to me, he's lying to my face. He knows he's lying, I know he's lying. Hey, who cares? He's got an important job title, I'm just a peasant, do what you're told. And I said, do you hear that noise, sir? He goes, what noise? I says, pitchforks at your front door. You know, put the phone down on me. They're terrified of it. What they need is just people asking questions. You don't have to, if you want to, if you want to withhold your, your taxes, it's the only thing, remember, the only thing, the only power you have, guys, you can whinge and whine as much as you want. If these courts are fixed, right? These so-called hearings are fixed. The old star chambers are back, right? Uh, the old uh, debtor's prisons are back. They've actually imprisoned one lady for not paying council tax. It's private. Debtor, and she had to pay, she had to pay for the release. The prison, not the council. Council. The prison, she had to pay. Circo, right? So anyway, so there's a whole raft of issues there wrong. We ended this debt, the debt slavery, uh, we ended this, uh, these debtor prisons back in the 1800s. They're back. Do you know why they're back? Because we're not saying no. You know? So if you decide you can't pay a bill, you, you can't pay a bill, or you, you decide to challenge a bill because it's un, un, illegal, they'll bang you up until you pay it. And they'll get away with it because nobody's saying no. So we need more people just saying two-word response to them. You know, remember that, remember that two-word response we used to give uh, guys like, Hitler, Napoleon, whatever, all these characters out there, these bad guys. We had, the British were famous for a, a, a certain, uh, uh, right, and uh, a two-word response to them. And that's the way it used to be. Now we've turned into absolute muppets. We have turned into obedient slaves. And we need to just wake up, guys, and just start saying, who are you people, you know? Because they're scared of us. There's more of us than there is of them. And I don't mean that in a sort of, yeah, we're all, all talking tough. Genuinely, they are scared of us. Genuinely scared of us. So why do you think they build these bunkers? So anyway, on that basis, guys, uh, I'll finish the talk there. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take any questions if you want. Uh, and we can call it a night. Yeah. Yeah.
they do necessarily under, under, under uh, intellectual, intellectual property and corporate doesn't necessarily have to be registered. The fact that you've used it can be sufficient protection. Yeah, you can call yourself. You. Changing, changing him to Wigan Council. Don't send me a don't send me a bill though, because I'll have to pay it. Yeah. Do it. I, in court, I get two of my mates to, to, to print off these uh, 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 bills, council tax, but I never actually used it in court. But I had them printed off, and I was when it was talking, it could be, could be Benny Bander or something that's sending these bills. And I was going to say, I've got three different council tax bills. Which one is the one I've got to pay? Because I've got three here, I'm not allowed to question them. That's how powerful, this is how monstrous, monstrously powerful this is for criminals. Can you imagine if you were a criminal gang just taking control of like, Greater Manchester Combined Authority and as a result of the 10 constituent councils? How much money are they taking in a year? You're in charge of all planning, which is a license to print money. Let's be honest. My God. And look at all the planning, is happening. look at all the developments happening in Manchester now. Right? I'm not suggesting anything publicly, I'm not suggesting any proprietary, but you know, a reasonable person would be asking questions. Because uh, I, I know for a fact, living in Ireland for three years, once you control planning, you are God. You just you just order the yacht tomorrow, right? Uh, it's all brown envelopes galore, right? And I saw brown envelopes openly passed across tables. If you think this stuff doesn't happen, it does. Uh, so yeah, it's just just be, just be aware that these guys are if, once you, if a criminal gang. And how how difficult is it to take over a city region? You've got a small committee of maybe 12 people, 15 people, right? So how much money would it cost you? to terrify 12, 15 people into doing what they're told. If you're a gangster, say you say you're some Russian mafia boy, you want to take over and we get to Manchester, say 12, 15 in the committee, I don't know. Uh, and it's a million pounds each. Oh, a hitman you can get for 10 grand now, isn't it? Gun to somebody's head, he'll do what he's told. Get pictures of him buggering kids or you know, with a prostitute or, you know, sleeping with a woman next door or doing whatever it is they're into, you know, doing drugs or something, you know. You've now got them. For, for a million pounds, I could probably buy over by over an establishment if I'm clever enough. And they now run Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Be aware how vulnerable we are, how vulnerable democracy, how vulnerable your freedom is, guys. And this will be the same up here as well. That's what I'm saying, don't trust the decisions that's made by the council because who's really making the decisions behind the scenes. Anyway, sorry, diverted there. Any other ones, any other questions? No thoroughly bored. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a private club we've got, and it's uh, we're we're, we're uh, slavery uh, abol abolitionists. That's it. We're a slavery abolitionist. The f simple fact is, guys, every in this room's a slavery abolitionist. You all are, right? Dignity. The word dignity means, in legal terms, human value. Yes, sorry. No, don't never refuse. Never ever refuse a push and dishonour. Just say, I'm withholding, I'm doing my due diligence, and I'm withholding, right? I'll make you a payment of 150 quid a year, staying on her, because I understand the services I've got to, I'm happy to give you 150 quid a year towards the services, no problem. However, I'm withholding the rest until you can confirm who and what you are, and where every penny that's going to. Ask the full accounts, I want to see what every single penny is going to. They won't do it, because what you're asking, what you're exposing no, is fraud. No, no, this isn't, this isn't, there's no debt been proven yet. There's no debt been proven yet. This is a stage before that. Who are you? Yeah. So, I mean, what this is, you never, just to, just to clarify, as I can't emphasize enough, do not refuse. Never refuse. Keep place yourself in dishonour. You're screwed in court. You walk into court in dishonour. Have a few day. Never, never, never refuse. Make them a, a, a small payment or whatever you want to do. Uh, come to some agreement. Just, to, you know, just so you, I'm giving them some money. But I'm hoping the money's here. And I've got an account. I've got cash. I'm, I've got it here. When you can prove who and what you are. It's called the conditional release of payment. Uh, and you ask all these questions I've, I've asked. Yeah, 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 I get answers to these questions. Blah, blah, blah. Why is this? Why is that? Why is that? Because I'm doing my due diligence on the UK criminal con uh, cr Convention on Criminal Corruption. Because I believe there's money laundering taking place. And <gasps> money laundering is also anti-terrorism suite of laws. I don't know if it's money. How, can you prove to me this money is not going to ISIS? Or IRA or Al-Qaeda or whatever. Or, you know, or the Russian Mafia or whatever. Can you prove that to me? Because you've got an obligation. Is that you, and you just yeah. Give them a, a I make him an offer. Well, what I mean, I've made an offer to Wigan Borough Council 
who can't respond back because they're a shell company now. But Wigan Borough Council itself can't accept money because it's as far as my little bank accounts. So I keep getting Wigan Council saying, yeah, you can give us the money. No, piss off. Wigan Borough Council, I'm, that's who I talk I don't talk to Wigan Council. I'm not interested in who you are. I'll talk to Wigan Borough Council, so I write to Wigan Borough Council. That's the only people I write to, is Wigan Borough Council. And by the way, another thing, when you're writing to them, right, the chief execs, town clerks, will, uh, will try and say we didn't know. Don't give them plausible deniability. Every time somebody, some minion from the council writes to you, yeah? I have nothing against councils themselves. Councils, we need them. We like councils. We have I like councils which are democratic and work for us. And not these private clubs where it's all with hey, loads of money and they're all sworn at big fancy cars at our expense. Uh, <coughs> but the, when you write to the councils or the local authorities or whatever it is, uh, you always write to the town clerk or the chief executive of your choice and copy the minion into that correspondence. That way the town clerk can't say, I didn't know. So you write always, because you're the boss of your business, why are you writing to their janitor? I have nothing against janitors, but I've more respect for janitors than most of these managers, right? Uh, but why are you writing to the janitor? You write to their boss. So you always write to the boss. So if somebody from DVLA writes to me, I respond back to the, the, the used to be the Minister of Transport. Right? That's why I, I swear write back to us. my boss. I say he's the boss, he's the boss. I'm my, I'm my boss, I'll speak to him. They've got us talking as minions to minions. Right? So always copy the top man in so he cannot say, I didn't know. Okay, if you understand uh, the, the Justice and Corners Act 2009, notice them, I understand the state of slavery, uh, uh, similar practice exists. They can't dodge that one. But anyway, that's another talk. So, any more? Can you say more there's like five private companies that are running? More than that. So why are we getting five invoices from everyone and rather than just one? Because the guys, what's happened is, it's so departmentalised, the guys, that we deal with on a daily basis, I haven't got a clue, they're not allowed to know what's going on, right? So they've, they, they departmentalise the council. It happens automatically with these private bodies anyway. So the they, don't they don't know. They just don't know. Yeah, they don't know. I, I get told by a councillor in Wigan, there's no legally trained people in Wigan Council at all. Nobody, even head of legal services, has no legal qualifications. Right, I get told that, right, from a councillor. Uh, and. Uh, makes you wonder why no legal professionals want to go near the place. Could it be they know the shit's about to hit the fan and they're keeping it out of the way? And you'll find that they're buying in the brain and they're buying in now their uh, uh, legal advice. Okay, so that's why it's just they're so, so fragmented. You'll find with the, these, these councils, they're so fragmented. They hate each other. Absolutely hate each other. And a good trick to play, not a trick, but a good strategy is getting fighting with each other. Ask him a question and ask him for his response to it and ask her what well, her response is to that. And getting fighting with each other. Who do I blame? You you guys are aware. Who who do I blame for this? And getting fighting with each other. I'll go to jail. I'll go to jail rather than pay it. And no, I'll, I'll, I'll pay it when they can say, they can answer these simple, straightforward, perfectly reasonable questions. I'm sure they'll send big guys round to try and take the house off me, but there's stuff I'm working on at the moment that will stop that happening. But I'm sure they would love nothing more. However, we, they, 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 they sent through to my wife an attachment of earnings notice uh, last year. Now, they couldn't get information for us to volunteer it, so what they did do is they were through tax office or something, they managed to get uh, 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 the, the employer's details. So they get a notice of, they send these notices, they don't send the actual copy of the order, they'll send you a notice. You won't get a liability, you'll never see a liability order. What you'll get is a notice of liability order. Yeah, I'll have a notice of F off as well, right? It's a notice, it's nothing. I always see the liability order, and the liability order, when you do see it, is just a computer print out. It's, that's all it is, They're meaningless. Uh, but anyway, so for the, for the attachment of earnings notice, uh, my response to that was I contacted an employer, and I says, well, I want to know the name of the account the money's been paid to, and the name of the body that the attachment, the, 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 note, the order was made to. So I want to know who the account was going to, and what was the name of the body, because I know it would be different. And they haven't done it because they know it's fraud. How many years have you been Five, four, five years now. Oh, I've been here for another five years. I've got the money parked up. The money's there. I've got the money parked up. I'm not trying to dodge anything. For people who think, oh, he's trying to dodge paying stuff. And I'm not. It's just asking reasonable questions. Is this money going to a private company and disappearing into private funds and going to private equity firms and paying for other people's mortgage, pensions and mortgages when I can't afford to buy myself a bloody pension? No, the money's there. The money's parked up there. But they've not, I'm not, no. But who do I give it to? You say they, who's they? Wigan Borough Council's never said, yeah, we agreed to negotiate with you. So they get the back here, mate, yeah. They get the lad back there, so. Yeah, um, you mentioned again there, but you talked about the pension fund being 
12.8 billion pounds. Yeah. Yes. If you go on YouTube, this is breaking stuff here, by the way. Also, yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant. Okay. Uh, I have some ex experience uh, with corporate accounting mm -hmm. in a financial sense, not in accountability. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're going to use this as accounts, but. Remember, we're saying about the quarters, so we get the, the, the hard copy stuff under the counter and there's two sets of accounts. Yeah, but apparently it's not fraud, apparently according to the judges. Yeah, I'd agree with you. If, if any's interested in this, just to finish. Well, can I, I can happily say now, right, we have professionals now in the UK, we've found it in America, they've got a thing called CAFA. Right, C-A-F-R, look up on YouTube, there's people talking about it, you know, and it's broken, you see, we've found we've got it here as well. And this is where money gets diverted into private funds, what's called special purpose government. Special means private. Private purpose government, special purpose government, right? And I, was, I don't want really to talk about it just now, but let's just say we've got guys on the case here. When the story breaks, it's going to be devastating because you'll find it just how much money has been stolen from us. So, yeah. You pension. I'm not suggesting they do that for a minute. If it's £12.8 billion pounds has been used to back up that. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't suggest for a minute the reason they funnel a lot of this council tax money through credit unions is because entirely private and not subject to public scrutiny. I wouldn't suggest that for a minute. And I wouldn't suggest a minute they use the police pension funds either for extra protection for their, for their private. I wouldn't suggest that for a minute. A reasonable man might, but I'm not a reasonable man. I don't know enough. I'm not legally trained. Yes, mate. These private funds, presumably, you're making a distinction between, say, this is subcontracted out to private, like the waste is subcontracted out to the That's You're not making that. A that's, a, that's a budget, that's a public budget. This is there were different names, private reserve funds, and we found this out in America. If you're interested, there's a lady in America called uh, Dr. Shirley Moore with an E, Moore with an E, Shirley Moore, and she does a thing called uh, Judges Slush Funds. Go on YouTube and watch us, it's 20 minutes long, and it's the most jaw dropping 20 minutes I've ever watched on YouTube, right? She is part of a criminal case in the States, black, you know, she's a, a, a black lady. A lady of colour, and uh, but she is an absolute terrier. I love her to death, right? She's a terrier, but she got them in through a criminal case to admit that the courts in America run private. They've got these private funds as well. They've all got them. The police, no doubt, have got them as well. Greater Manchester Police, who became a corporation, so private company in August 2013. Check your own council. How you find this out? Go and read the, go and read the finance reports. They're online. Ask for a copy if they're not. You find in paragraph one of the, the Great Manchester Police uh, Finance Report from last year uh, stated that a corporation sold in August 2013. Uh, can't ask questions about that though, because it's private. They're now a private company. Uh, I've got to see so I've got serious concerns with these oh, private funds. Uh, but this surely more proved that the courts and these private funds are called special family fund, special children's protection fund, no sort of say, but the word special is in there, it's private. They use other names. This is basically a slush fund that judges can have the good life on, uh, you know, according to Shirley Moore. So it's 20 minutes long, and I urge people to watch this. It's a jaw dropping. We could prove it here. Game over. We can fill these bloody jails or build some more jails and get some honest people running the show. Anyway, sorry. Yes, mate. Any more questions? Yeah. If, if I am not a computer nerd, but if I am a computer nerd, I'm We've got some videos. This will be on your Dignity Alliance. Uh, uh, we've got on YouTube. We've got a limited amount of videos. Uh, we've, we're we're, we're uh, uh, putting out good information, and there's a link that we're talking about just now. And it's, it's also on the basis of anti-slavery. So everything we do is around the concept of slavery abolition, uh, and the fact that we're all being enslaved just now by the back door. And uh, read up slavery by. Don't read the modern stuff in slavery. It's bullshit. It's all been politicised. They don't even know them. I wrote to the police commissioner and asked him what's the definition of slavery. Uh, sorry, thank you very much for celebrating anti-slavery day, sir, 10th of October, whatever, blah, blah, blah. How uh, I would really recommend you. We work with you. You're supporting the same cause as us. However, what definition of slavery are you using? And he came back and said the statutory definition. Sir, so back and says there is none, sir. International law. He didn't even know. Is that, not, is that not worrying? It's all bullshit. These guys work on bullshit. Okay. Anyway, so... 
Uh, on that happy note, unless there's any more questions, I'll depart and let you go on with the guys. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>